Tennessee with hopes today of nailing down perhaps a Cotton Bowl bid. And the Volunteers still have an outside shot of making it to the Sugar Bowl, but they've got to win this week and also next week against the Kentucky Wildcats. What you're seeing now is the U.S. Navy parachute team and a couple of members of the Navy parachute team, the Leapfrogs, are bringing the game ball down. Archie, have you ever seen this in Ole Miss? Uh, one time when Ole Miss <laughs> played the Independence Bowl a couple years ago, the weather was real bad. They didn't make it into the stadium. They landed on a Ford dealership about four blocks away, Bob. <laughs> Well, these guys look like they're on pretty good route to get here. We'll, we'll see exactly in just a few minutes. Ron, let's talk about Tennessee. Traditionally, Tennessee is a pretty good fast starting team this year. They've come out, they've established the ground game, they've thrown the ball early in each game so far this year. If they could get ahead and run the ball with their with their ground attack as good as it is, they usually take control of the ball game. The problem that Tennessee's had is when they fell behind their first half football team where Ole Miss conversely is a second half team. They've come from behind in three, four victories scoring in the last quarter to win the game, Bob. And there are the Ole Miss Rebels hitting the field. Archie, you look at Ole Miss, this really six and three is a better than a lot of people, a lot better than most people had thought. Well, they've won some big games. Uh, they've won three, they're three and zero on the road, uh, two and zero on turf. Although they really don't like to play on turf, which they are today. Of course, a big win down in Florida early in the season. Came back from a very disappointing and unique game against Alabama, where they were up 21 nothing, wound up losing 62 to 21, but beat Georgia in Jackson the next week. That was a big win for Ole Miss. You watch the officials, watch the parachuters come down. They don't want to get in their way. Make sure they don't get. They're supposed to land on the 50-yard line. There is a T, a landing strip. Marked right in the middle of the field to see if indeed they will get there on time. The Tennessee team, Ronnie, has defensively been really working the past two weeks to mold things and try and get a little more aggressive. They've tried to do some different things against Akron last week. They opened with their nickel defensive set, put an extra defensive back in there. This week they're going to have a true 4-3 front with four secondary people, but they're going to try to create more situations, more turnovers. Gamble make more third and long situations for the offense, keep them out of the uh, passing zones and try to create some sacks and big plays. The parachuters are swirling toward Neyland Stadium. Mike Keith's on the turf. Mike, can you give us a, a view of the parachuters coming down and what's going on on the field? It's absolutely what Ron was saying. I spoke with Tennessee linebacker coach Jim Bates, Bob, and he says Tennessee is going to send five, six, seven, or eight people in different situations. They're going to try to knock Darnell down. There's no doubt about it. He was very frank and very open, saying they're not going to sit back. They're much happier with their secondary. They think they can do better. Now, Ole Miss is a heavy underdog, a two-touchdown underdog, as a matter of fact, but they played in some big, big games this season. They're very poised and very, very ready. Don't appear nervous at all, Bob. Archie, let's talk about if indeed something happens to Darnell, who does Ole Miss have behind Darnell? Well, Shiles will go in. He's a, he's a red, red shirt freshman. Uh, he has Russ Shiles has just thrown the ball 12 times this year. Offensive coordinator Red Parker thinks he's an outstanding prospect. He thinks he's really going to be a good quarterback. I think they had planned to play Russell a lot more during the course of the year to try to put him in at the appropriate time. Darnell has just played so well. He has been a good quarterback throughout the year. He's thrown the ball good. He's been a great leader. It just hadn't been that many opportunities to see Russell Shiles. Although, Bob, he will come in inside the 10-yard line, around the 5-yard line, and run the wishbone offense for the Rebels. Here comes the football to kick it off. Let's see how close they get to midfield. Well, one didn't make it. That guy's going to be close. Just over shot. I hope nobody winds up in the upper deck here. Look, I got a three-man tag team here, Bob. And <laughs> yeah, they're all going to make it on the field. Unbelievable. They look like they're ready to line up and play. <laughs> the Navy Leapfrogs do their job. And now we're ready to play football. One of them might have a couple of turf burns down there. <laughs> Somebody set off a, a green smoke flare down at one end of the field. Well, the pageantry is over with. Now we get down to football. Tennessee comes out, of course, with Andy Kelly as the starting quarterback again this week. Sterling had played a little bit last week against the Akron Zips. Let's talk, Ron, a little bit about Andy Kelly and his performance, and I think his consistency. His consistency has really been a steadying force, Ron, with this Tennessee offense. Kelly came into the game after the first quarter against Alabama. Tennessee hadn't got any points on the board. We're behind 10 to zip. He scored 30 points or led the offense to score 30 points the rest of that game. 42 the next week, 52 last, 45 rather, then 52. Each week he's progressively getting better. He's got confidence and feeling that he can drive the team down the field and score in any situation. 
The captains are meeting at midfield. The toss of the coin has been won. And Tennessee is going to take the football. Archie, that's a pretty good indication right there. Absolutely. Of course, Ole Miss will get to check out that offensive line real quick. I'm sure we saw that pitch to Chuck Webb as they were want on some of the highlights before the game. I'm quite sure we're going to see that play very often today for the Tennessee Volunteers. So the Volunteers will take the ball first. Tennessee has been terrific in November under Coach Johnny Majors, 37 and 11. And Tennessee has also uh, really had the momentum in November. They've won 18 straight games, and we'll try and keep that up today against these Ole Miss Rebels. Jimmy Harper is the official today, the referee. Umpires Burton Williams, linesman Ray Moon, line judge Lauren O'Stapp, side judge is Ben Oldham, field judge Joe Delaney, back judge is Prince E. Pollard, and the alternate official is Larry Rose. Volunteers are on the field, set to receive the kickoff. The wind is blowing from the south, but Archie, it doesn't look to be that much of a factor right now. No, it doesn't seem to be. It just swirls. That's the big problem, Bob. I don't think you pay that much attention to the wind. I just think on deep passes, the quarterbacks have to be careful trying to keep the nose down. So Brian Lee, a freshman, will kick it off for the Ole Miss Rebels. And Tennessee will shift back their speedy receivers. Anthony Morgan is one. He'll stand back at the goal line. And Carl Pickens, who ran off back a kickoff against LSU, will also join him. Set to go, big game for both teams as Tennessee and Ole Miss with bull hopes on the line meet today. Ole Miss also trying to snap this long losing streak in the hands of the Tennessee Volunteers. 95,000 on hand and here we go. Short kick, Wynn held it up. And a fair catch is gonna be made. The up back made it. And that's Dwayne Dotson. So Dotson makes the fair catch and Tennessee will take it at the 23 yard line. I think Brian Lee may have done what the coaches instructed him, kick that high kick, he's very good at that. So Andy Kelly jumps in the huddle. Tennessee's offensive line, Charles McCray, 6'7", 283, a junior. Tom Mizlinski, 6'2", 278, sophomore. John Fisher's the center, 6'4", 275. Eric Still, 6'3", 283. Anton Davis, 6'4", 306, and they go right to Chuck Webb. And Webb's got a first down. Dragged out of bounds across the 40-yard line. Pete Harris slid over to make the stop, and Archie, they went right at him. First well, I said they, we might see that pitch play today. I didn't know they'd come with it on the first down. Did a good job of blocking at the point. Webb was able to turn the corner. Tennessee was unbalanced on that formation, too. They were to the wide side of the field. Ron, you're talking unbalanced. What they're doing is taking another tackle. and They're putting two offensive tackles on the same side of the football. And that's exactly what they're doing now on first and 10. And again, it's Webb. And again, big running room. Sean Cobb, their outstanding middle linebacker, makes the stop for the Rebels. Sean, 6'2", 225, a junior out of Jackson, leads the team in tackles with 89 stops. Here are the wide receivers for Tennessee. Cleveland and Woods. Woods approaching the all-time receiving record. Adams, the tight end. And there's the offensive line we outlined for you. John Fisher has really been an anchor for this team up the middle. The offensive line has been healthy. Everybody has started every game with the exception of Anton Davis, and he didn't start one, and then he played in the game later on. Webb again. Short of the first down. Picked up a couple. Kelvin Pritchard. The 6'3", 273 junior tackle out of Atlanta makes the stop. Probably been Ole Miss's most consistent defensive player this year. Has six sacks to his credit. There's the Ole Miss up front. They've had some people banged up. The linebackers, Ricky Richardson starts for Keith Thompson, probably their best linebacker. And the secondary is pretty healthy, except for Todd Sandroni, who is not playing, and Jeff Carter gets to start there. Big third down play for Tennessee. Need about four yards. And Webb gets the honors, and he's not going to make it. Pete Harris comes up. And he gets help also from Doug Jacobs, 94, and the Rebels have stopped Tennessee. Nice defensive play for the Rebels. Actually, Ole Miss shifted to the wide side of the field, so Tennessee was running the right direction. It's just good defensive play on the outside. Ron, they came up and stuffed it pretty good. The chance of God when no one got to him. We didn't have any blockers out there. We just had two people on that side of the ball. As far as Tennessee was concerned, they were, they were shorthanded and tried to go back and do a little trickery. It didn't work that time. So Ken Elmore in bad snap gets it off. High driving, wobbly spiral inside the 20, and it's fumbled away, and it's, it's going to be recovered by Ole Miss. Dangerous play that time by Ole Miss as the punt 
was recovered by Sandroni as it was bobbled by Pat Coleman. Good enough play by Ty Sandroni. Pat Coleman couldn't get a handle on it. Only a 36 yard punt. Ole Miss comes out first and 10 at its own 21 yard line as well they're working. Ole Miss with Ed Thickpen and Randy Baldwin as the running backs. Not going to throw it first play, complete. Randy Baldwin on the reception, knocked down by Kelly Days. Baldwin's been tough coming out of the backfield, 18 catches so far this season. Owen's an excellent receiver. Ben Parker's getting more and more confidence in him coming out of the backfield. Darnell does a good job, especially throwing the swing pass to Baldwin. As the offensive front, Dawson Pruitt is a great story. Tim Brown is a hard-nosed football player. The Rebels think they've made some improvements in the offensive line. Second down, about four yards to go. They go to the eye formation this time. And Baldwin gets a block and skips to the outside. Baldwin's got a first down to the 40-yard line. Randy Baldwin does a good job of picking his holes. Had some runs very similar to this against LSU. He seems to be improving each week, Bob. Carl Pickens and Shazan Bradley make the stop. Baldwin follows his block real well right there. Pickens, of course, is a free safety. Steps up there and makes his first big tackle starting this game as a safety man. I'm sure he's not too used to making tackles back there. There's John Darnell, the poised and senior quarterback. He leads the team in the number of rushing attempts. He's only gained 72 yards, though, because of the sacks. Here's Darnell, swings it out again. Good running by Ole Miss. Close to a first down. Preston Ward makes the stop. I believe that's Maurice Shaw who'd come into the backfield. Sure is. Shaw Ole Miss players down. Shaw makes the catch in the swing pass. And the other player is down. Archie, right now they're just throwing the safe passes so Darnell can get to the game a little High bit. High percentage stuff. Red Parker, offensive coordinator, said he really expected Tennessee to kind of lay back today. In that case, he was going to try to throw nickel and dime type passes, control the football. He just wasn't very confident they could run the run the football against this strong Tennessee defense, but they wanted to control it by the short passing game. Maurice Shaw is one of the players on the Ole team from the state of Tennessee. He's from Tallahoma. Here's the Tennessee defense. Hobby and Moore up front along with Williams and Tracy Hayworth. And the linebackers, a couple of changes there. Ernest Field starts. On uh, the outside, Shazan Bradley get in the middle and Daryl Hardy on the right side. Sh uh, Sean Walker back it up in the middle as Casey Rogers is out today. Days, Warren, Denson, and Pickens are in the defensive secondary. Denson's been fighting injuries. It was marked a first down for the Rebels, their second on this drive. Pruitt's out of the game, and Vince Bonham is now in its center for the Rebels. Catch him in a blitz, and Thigpen gets about five up the middle. She's on Bradley on the stop. Kelly Days is also there, and Tracy Hayward. Ron, it looks like Tennessee trying to counter that short passing game. They were coming with the blitz that time. Ole Miss really caught a pretty good play, just that straight handoff to Thigpen up the middle. They had three linebackers. All of them were running up in the gap, starting to penetrate. They're trying to create a line of scrimmage a yard deep in the backfield. If you can catch him in that blitz, you can burn him, and that's what Darnell's trying to do right now. It's second down, about six. There's his running ability, and he dives close to a first down near the 40-yard line. Nice play by Darnell. I thought he had a sack. John's taken a lot of sacks this year. Marion Hobby pinned him. Archie, it looks like, though, Darnell is so smart and has the instincts he knows when the pressure's coming. That's exactly right. He's a very smart football player. He's a senior. Played a good bit of football. Started at times. Played a lot against Tennessee two years ago here. Now the Rebels come with a wishbone, and that's 14 rush shells in a quarterback. He'll play in short yardage situations, replacing Darnell. Big play for the Tennessee defense of the 41. And the handoff goes to the new fullback into the contest, Scott Swatzel. A 5'11 freshman from Thomasville, Alabama. He's their short yardage man, and he's got a first down. Darrell Hardy makes the stop for Tennessee. The Rebels, well the Rebels will have Ronnie McKinley and Scott Swatzel in on that wishbone offense short yardage today. No score, 10 minutes exactly to go in the first period. Darnell back in at quarterback. Dawson Pruitt was shaking up a few plays back, and Vince Bonham, junior college transfer, took his place. Keep an eye on Pruitt. Draw play to Thickpen. 
Down to the 35-yard line. Bradley again drags him down. I believe that was halfback Tyrone Ashley in the game to take that draw play, Bob. Rebels doing a good job of mixing up their plays, running pass. Ashley 33, Thigpen is 32. It's like the backup receivers, Jeffrey Holder and Reed Hines, have checked into the game for Coleman and Green now. Second and five, Darnell. He's at the Tennessee 35-yard line. Slant pattern, complete to Reed Hines. Archie called it. They got the possession receiver in, and he's got a first down at the 23. Reed Hines caught the winning touchdown pass from John Darnell that beat the University of Georgia earlier this year. Just a three-step drop by John Darnell. Throw that quick slant in there to Reed Hines, who's a senior. These guys have been together for a long time at Ole Miss. Ronnie, has Tennessee been really susceptible to that uh, play on the seam, the little slant pass? Tennessee gambled the first two or three possessions on this drive. They tried to send some people in there to pressure the quarterback, but they've been sitting back in the zone since and giving them the short pass, having to react up and make the tackle after the first down. Four first downs in this drive. Darnell going to throw it again. He's got a man open. That's Thickpen inside the 10-yard line. Darnell kind of sprinted out to his right, looked to his right. This was the play set up to go for a home run. Thickpen to pull back, a swing out of the backfield to the backside. Jimmy of the tight end trying to clear out. It wasn't why he was open. I think they hoped to get a touchdown out of that, but it was certainly a big play. This has been an impressive drive by Ole Miss. Yeah, Darnell's 4 of 4 for 42 yards, and they've got four first downs, oh, five first downs now on the drive. And the Rebels inside the Tennessee 10 yard line. First and goal on this. Baldwin back at tailback. Tennessee showing blitz, here they come. Darnell on the option to Baldwin. He's got a seam and he's got a score. Once again, Ole Miss had in the perfect play. Tennessee showed blitz. The out linebackers weren't there to pick up the outside and run. It's an easy touchdown. Sure enough, everybody got locked up inside, taking their gaps. The corner got ran off by the wide receiver down in a pattern. Quarterback made a good pitch. Nobody was there to make the play on him. He waltzed into the end zone. Seventh touchdown of the year for Randy Baldwin, and the Rebels lead it six to nothing. John Darnell really kept his cool in running that option play. Right move, the place kicker drills it, and the Rebels lead it seven to nothing. 8-19 to go in this first period, and the Rebels look very impressive. John Darnell, Archie, looked about as cool and collected as he was built. He did just a great drive. Good play selection by offensive coordinator Red Parker. Good job of running the offense by John Darnell. Some big plays along the way. They give John Darnell a lot of responsibility, Ron, at the line of scrimmage. He's a smart kid. He's a senior. Red Parker says, I put it all on him. I let him call a lot of audibles. A lot of, I let him read the defense and check off a great deal. He made this pitch early here, and look, the outside linebacker wasn't even close. He turned the corner. Ball was up and in the end zone before we react to the ball as Tennessee lets up a touchdown. Ron was the, the linebacker when they came inside. That really spelled doom for the play, didn't it? They took an advantage. They took the gaps on the inside. They were good job of offensive linemen blocking, sealing it off to the outside. And it was just a foot race to the corner, and Baldwin obviously scores easily. 79 yards on the drive and 10 plays. Randy Baldwin takes it in, and the Tennessee defense around our defensive coordinator Doug Matthews trying to regroup right here as the Rebels look very good on that first possession. Tennessee had the ball, got a first down, had a punt, and the Rebels come right back and score. Let's see if Brian Lee tries that short kick once again, trying to keep it away from Carl Pickens. He does it. Pickens is going to get this one as he moved up to the 10-yard line. Pickens has it at the 13. He's got a seam, and he's knocked down in a great tackle by Tyrone Ashley. Ashley on the special teams makes the stop, but Tennessee has it on the market at the 35. That was a big play by Tyrone Ashley. Pickens had a big gap there. Great speed. Ashley, of course, the backup running back playing on those special teams. Yes. We'll see if the volunteers now can crank it up offensively. Chuck Webb again in a tailback. Absler now the fullback, and Kelly stays at quarterback. Chuck Webb's been the work for us. Jeff Carter makes the stop. That's close to another first down. Oh, what a great job of running by Chuck Webb. Off tackle play to the right side and just cuts it all the way back to the left. Can't teach that, can you? Oh, he's an impressive back. Running to daylight right there. Chuck Webb, great cuts. And Carter comes up and makes the stop, knocks him off his pins. It's not a first down, so it's second and short. See if Andy Kelly takes a shot long here. The 
they'll get the first down with Amsler. And Amsler has that and more. Down to the 41 yard line. Jim Lentz and Keith Thompson, who is now under the contest, make the stop. Thompson wasn't expected to play very much. He's been banged up as the entire Ole Miss defense has been. Four or five guys on that defense. Billy Brewer put it to me at breakfast this morning. He said, if this was a spring game, none of these guys would play. Obviously, it's not a spring game, and many of them are trying to go. Yeah, the only place they have depth on defense is on the injury list. First and 10, Tennessee. Amsler had it by a lot. Again, Webb. Chase behind the line of scrimmage, broke a tackle by Pritchard. And those who ball down to the 36 or 7 yard line. Well, arm tackling there, Webb running hard. Gary Evide is finally the guy who was able to drag him down. Seven minutes to go, first period. Tennessee couldn't score on the first possession. Ole Miss took it right down the field. There's the scoring play for you, or the scoring drive. Randy Baldwin takes it in on a nine yard gallop. Second down. Pitch to Webb. No problems. That is knocked down. He might have picked up a yard or two. Keith Thompson strings it out, makes the stop. Ole Miss sort of smelled that one, Archie. Well, Victor Lester stayed in position there, did a good job of forcing him outside. Keith Thompson, one of the injured players in the game, there to make the tackle. Tony Bennett also attempting to play today. He's not practiced in two weeks with a bad shoulder. How big a loss is that, Archie? The That's loss a big of loss. Most of the Scouts personnel directors have been through Ole Miss this year. Felt like Tony Bennett would definitely be a first round draft pick. 6'5, 240. Great specimen, Bob. Third down short for Tennessee. Holes. He's going to have a first down, I think. He's going to be close. Sean Cobb makes the stop for the Rebels right in the middle. Charles McCray said it's a first down. He doesn't count. It'll be Jimmy Harper, the official, who will take a look at it. See indeed if it is a first down. Tennessee, John Darnell, uh, we mentioned his exploits on that first drive. Darnell came into today only needing uh, nine yards to pass Mark Young for second place in the all time Ole Miss passing category. And uh, the number one guy on the list is Ken Austin. It was 66 yards today. John Darnell could pass him. So it could be a big day for John Darnell. He's off to a good start. Great season. That's certainly an impressive drive. You know, for a guy who was playing baseball last year and was thinking about that, this has turned out to be a pretty good football year for him. Well, you really have to feel good for John Darnell, especially in his senior season. A lot of people not expecting much from him and to be able to play this type of football. First down, Tennessee. <laughs> Kelly checking off. Thompson moves up a little bit of tailback. Overshoots his man, Anthony Morgan, was one on one on the outside, and the pass was just too high. Well, I think Kelly did check off, and he made a good check off to throw the quick slant. Ole Miss was bringing their safety, Chris Mitchell, on the outside. A good check, just a high throw. You just saw a shot of Mark Hovannik, a former Tennessee defensive tackle who's now on the Ole Miss staff. Hovannik, of course, was a big key in Tennessee's winning the Sugar Bowl back in 85 as he played inspired football from his defensive tackle slot. Also, uh, Henry is the now the defensive coordinator for this Ole Miss team. Robert Henry, coached Robert here Henry Tennessee. and he coached here at Tennessee as well. <laughs> Nobody's open deep. Now Morgan is there, and the pass is going to be intercepted. Jeff Carter. Carter picks it off as he steps in front of Anthony Morgan. The pass was underthrown, and Carter, who had a big interception against LSU, picks this one off to stop Tennessee again. Well, Kelly did a pretty good job finding no one open, got outside of the containment, just didn't throw a very good pass. Carter came up with another big interception. He picked off one against Tommy Hodson in the second half versus LSU two weeks ago. Jim Lentz is the guy who's in there putting pressure on Andy Kelly. And Kelly, who threw an interception last week against Akron, throws one here. Now the Rebels are in business. Jeff Carter, sophomore, free safety, of course, taking the place of All-American candidate Todd Sandroni. Carter, 5'11", 180-pound sophomore from Tuscaloosa. The Rebels now are backed up, but they've got the football. Baldwin, nice move on Dotson. Nice running by Baldwin. 16-yard line is where he's knocked out of bounds by Carl Pickens. Well, that is such a big play. To be backed up away from home with a big crowd is very intimidating for an offense. You always want to get something positive on that first down. Just 
Great individual effort by Randy Ball and getting Ole Miss out of a hole. Ron, they're getting to the outside, though. Here comes the counter tray play. Baldwin does a great job of setting up the blocks because he does the dip down inside, causing the defense to react, and then bounces it outside to get away from contain and set up the big first down. So the Rebels in business again. They've got some breathing room now. And Darnell wants to throw it. Got a man open the pass just a bit high. Rich Jevia, the tight end, was there. We couldn't pull it down. Once again, a good call, that play action on first down. I think it caught Tennessee a little off guard. John had a little pressure, maybe rushed it a little bit. Ball was just a little high for Jibia. Mark Moore coming through there, broke through and, and, and pressured in his face before he could throw the ball. Ron, is Tennessee going to have to blitz some more to get to, to get to Darnell? They haven't gotten close to him, really. They sure haven't. And that was one of the goals of the defensive game plan is to put some pressure on him. So far today, we haven't seen that. That was Darnell's first miss. He's averaging 10 and a half yards per completion so far. Right up the middle, think pen. Bust across the 20 to the 23 where Ernest Fields knocks him down. Fields gets the start today. Fields, a sophomore out of Milan, Tennessee. You know, Bob Arch said that uh, they ran the ball to keep other teams honest. Old Miss sure looks like they're more proficient than somebody who just does it to keep people honest. Well, Randy Bowen has really come on, Ron. He's a junior college transfer. They're excited about having him for two more years He's out of Georgia. Big pans, big fullback, missed last year, has really been running the ball well. Ole Miss leads it 7 0 with four and a half minutes to go in the first period. This is Ole Miss's second possession, and here comes the Tennessee Blitz. Flag down, Darnell is sacked by Darrell Hardy. We'll see what the flag is. Now that's what Tennessee wants to do come with that blitz, make it work, and get to Darnell before he can release the football. I think the flag came before the snap. Looks like an encroachment in the zone of where the ball was. Somebody was moving. That'll cost the Rebels five, so instead of making it third and five, now it's third and long. Those Tennessee Both linebackers up there in the blitz, one of the guards anticipating having to pick up that man move prior to the snap. Guard tried to cut Hardy, and he just alertly jumped over him, got his hands up right in the face of Darnell. It's a pretty good Ole Miss offensive line getting better, but it's a pretty young Ole Miss offensive line, and they have to keep their concentration today against this Tennessee dancing middle linebacking contingent. Tennessee faking the blitz. Here they come. They got him. Ernest Fields puts through and sacks Darnell. And a flag's on the play. That might be a hold against Ole Miss. There's Ernest Fields. I'm not sure they had time to hold. <laughs> This is something that Tennessee spent a whole period about in practice on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, is getting their blitzes in. They, they felt like with the positioning of the running backs in the set, in the backfield that they couldn't come up and cover both linebackers up the middle. Jimmy Harder, Harper trying to sort things out. 4.18 like to, to go. Looks like the penalty will go against Tennessee, a real break for Ole Miss, but Ole Miss, their offensive coaches really have to be concerned about that recent blitz and try to stop that. They've got to. How do you stop it, Arch? Well, John Darnell's very capable of checking off. Looks like he's going to have to move his line, his, his backs up in there to tighten them up to pick up and try to throw quick passes. So it's an in, inadvertent face pass. That's only a five-yard penalty. So now Darnell has it third down and five, and the Tennessee Volunteers again have eight men on the line of scrimmage. Now they back off. Here they come. Darnell. Has a man open, that's Baldwin. That's a great job of quarterbacking right there. Well, it really was. They were very close to getting John Darnell. You saw the back come in. It looked like the blitzer would get to John Darnell. He got his hands on him, but the back came in, got a piece of him. Darnell was able to roll out around. And then, obviously, it's very easy to get someone open. Tennessee's bringing everybody. It's man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. Great block by Thickman, and Preston Warren makes the tackle 25 yards downfield. But again, it's a first down for the Ole Miss Rebels. Now Sean Walker comes in, and Ernest Fields will take a seat. Ed Thickpan's a good football player, Bob. 5'11", junior from Drew, Mississippi. Long line of great players come out of there, as you know, Ron. <laughs> There's Thickpan again. <laughs> Let's just hope Tennessee doesn't make them better than they are today. So far, they haven't had much success in stopping this offense. Well, I, I don't think Ole Miss has seen the last of this blitz. Tennessee's going to continue to work on it. It's just going to be if Ole Miss can pick them up and Darnell can get rid of the football and convert. Marion Hobby made the last stop. There are the first downs. You see Ole Miss is just cranking them out right now. At five in the first drive, three in this drive, second time they've had the football, leading seven to nothing with three minutes to go in the first period. Darnell stumbles, falling down, gets it out to Baldwin. 
He's going to pick up three or four and fights for maybe five as Daryl Hardy slaps him down. Good open field tackle on the play. It certainly was. Looks like John stumbled somewhat just on his drop on the artificial turf. Wanted to look downfield, really didn't get the opportunity just through the swing pass out to Randy Baldwin. That's where you just isolate the back and the linebacker out in the flat. Daryl breaking down, keeping his feet, waiting for help to come. Good tackle on the numbers, and here come the rest of the Tennessee defense. Well, that was a perfect form tackle. Martin Williams, defensive tackle, put some good pressure on Darnell. Here's Darnell again. Can't dump it this time, throws it long, and misses his tight end. Tibia had a shot at it, but it was just a bit too high. So Tennessee's defense stops Ole Miss. Tennessee did a great job. Daryl Hardy was covering Tyrone Ashley on the swing. That's where John Darnell wanted to go with the football, and he was covered. He really just had to throw it away, kind of throw a hope to Jibia. So that's a, the first major adjustment right there for Tennessee's defense. Good job for Tennessee. Thomas Woods drifts back for Tennessee. And Ole Miss will get Charles Shoulders into the game to put it away. Good snap. High driving spiral. Woods will come up with a 21. He gets blasted by Thigpen. That's a marker. Did give him enough room to catch it. Thigpen blasted it. Thigpen had to be surprised that he didn't call for the fair catch. He didn't give him enough room, though. We Good concentration just to hold on to that football. Absolutely. Thigpen's knocking some folks around today, isn't he? Pretty tough guy. Thigpen, of course, uh, last year had some great problems. He didn't play. And uh, the transferred back to Ole Miss. Well, he got a lot of rest. He's fresh <laughs> this year. It's really pretty complete fullback though he runs the ball well and they call on him his outstanding blocker and catches the ball and running down on special teams two minutes to go first period Tennessee looking for its first points of the afternoon seven or nothing rebels Tony Thompson in a tailback for Tennessee Roland Poles is a fullback Poles gets stopped at the line of scrimmage good defense Daryl Smith is there and also Victor Lester for the rebels to Jam things up in the middle. Archie, so far, Tennessee has only been able to run outside against him. Right. Well, Chuck Webb just made some excellent moves to get outside. Ole Miss has stacked it up pretty good. They're pretty fired up on their defense. Kelly, of course, with the one interception. Toles didn't practice much this week, Bob. He's been banged up with a bad shoulder, neck kind of deal there, and uh, we'll probably see a lot more of Amsler at fullback as the day goes on. And Clemens McCroskey is ready for duty if needed. Second and long. Kelly on the fly pattern. And throws to the underneath man, which is Vaughn Reeves. Reeves, the tight end from Austin East, makes the catch, and it's going to be, depending on where they mark it, close to the first down. Tight end, the forgotten man of the Tennessee offensive scheme so far this year. Last week, uh, they threw a couple passes to Mark Adams for the first time. Vaughn had caught a pass or two against Duke and really not been in the offensive scheme until the catch right here. They've got a picture of him in the tight end meeting room of ball protection. He runs with it like a loaf of bread, and they remind him every day to put it away. One minute to go. First period. Kelly going to throw it again. Sideline patterns and cleat to Anthony Morgan. Diving catch in front of Chris Mitchell, the Ole Miss safety man. And that's going to be another first down. This is, Archie, the big concern for Ole Miss, the speed. Well, absolutely. I tell you, that's two nice plays by Andy Kelly, though. The first one, both of them are eye formation, play action passes. Good job on the first one of picking up his secondary receiver. He wanted to throw the corner, not covered. He dumped it off the tight end. That was a long, deep comeback. Of course, you know, these hash marks in college football, you can really have some long comeback patterns, Ron. Got to throw it a long way. Here's Kelly, right up the middle. Chuck Webb stopped by Pete Harris. Webb back into the contest. Might have got a face mask there on Ole Miss at the end of the play. Tennessee kind of setting them up pretty good now. They opened up with a couple play action passes out of that I formation, then just came back with the off tackle play there. Big hole for Webb. And the penalty, there's a face mask right there. Pete Harris got him. It's a five yard penalty. And the Rebels will have it, or I should say Tennessee will have it at the 36-yard line. Good wall off by the offensive front there from Tennessee. Now that they've thrown the passes, they've loosened up the secondary a little bit where there were eight men on the line of scrimmage of the series before. Now they're back into their proper zones. Kelly, pressured, gets out of there. He's got some running room now and dives down to the 28-yard line. 
Harris again there to pin him. He's going to be short of a first down by about a yard. Three out of four plays for Andy Kelly running that high formation play action pass. He's made the right decision on each one. That time no one opened. <laughs> Tucked so it and ran, picked up good yardage. So Tennessee will have it second and short when they come back. That's the end of the first period. And the Ole Miss Rebels lead Tennessee at Neyland Stadium, 7 0. There's Billy Brewer, the Ole Miss coach. <laughs> Brewer trying to lead this team. I, I, you know, it's, it's amazing <laughs> when you look at the, the seasons Tennessee and Ole Miss have had. Johnny Majors and Billy Brewer would be prime candidates for coaches of the year and the one for Bill Curry this year. Yeah, Bill Curry would have to be in the running, the big turnaround at Alabama. What a good looking football team they have. Billy Brewer's been the Southeastern Conference Coach of the Year twice during his tenure at Ole Miss. Of course, Johnny Majors, a great job he's done through the years at Tennessee. Yeah, Majors won it back in 1985. There's the first uh, quarter statistics in Ole Miss with that impressive first drive way out in front. Chuck Webb now has uh, 52 yards and eight carries. John Darnell in the first quarter was six of eight, 66 yards. That's the magic number, isn't it? Yep. He's tied for the Best season for an Ole Miss quarterback. Here's the end around to Vince Moore. No, Kelly keeps it. Kelly looking in the end zone. Nobody there. He's going to run it to the 20 and out of bounds. New play. They've worked on that for a month in practice and have been saving it for the proper time. And right now they made a shot for it. But good coverage by the Ole Miss secondary. Chris Mitchell drilled Kelly into the photographers, but he's okay. Here's the fake end around, Archie. Well, I think it's a good play. Once again, it didn't. They didn't, weren't able to execute it, I'm sure, like they tried in practice because he wanted to throw the ball. But I think Kelly, once again, made the right decision, picked got a positive gain in the first down out of it. Yeah, Mitchell hit him about four yards out of bounds, and that's going to cost Ole Miss. That's the, almost, that's the exact same play that Moore scored on last year, except they gave the ball to him as he scored at Oxford last year on the end of the round. Andy Kelly with 18 yards, and now Tennessee has it. First and goal. It's just inside the 10, so Tennessee's going to have to score. They can't get a first down. Pitch to Webb. Amsler's in front. Webb turns the corner and picks up a couple. Sean Cobb comes over with Philip Kent to make the stop. Pick up of just about three. Well, Chris Mitchell did his best. He's got support right there. Greg Amsler supplying the blocking once again. Very hard to get Chuck Webb without gaining yardage on that play. Just started the second period here at Newland Stadium. Tennessee second down and goal. Two tight ends in the formation. Webb up the middle. Darts to the outside and can't go anywhere. Again, good play by Ole Miss. And Tony Bennett made the play. It looked like Webb would break it to the outside. If he'd have gotten that one more step, he'd have certainly gotten into the end zone. And Chris Mitchell came up to. Help out in the support. Tony Bennett, they call him. He's from Alligator, Mississippi. You know where that is, Arch? Oh, yeah, that's not far from Drew. That's in Tahoma County. He's got a pet snake named Pete. Tony Bennett does. He's a good football player. Third down, goal, Tennessee. Kelly into the end zone. It's going to be a wait touchdown to Alvin Harper. Had to wait. Harper does his dance, and the Volunteers cut it to one. It's seven to six. Well, Tennessee took advantage of the old Miss blitz. Left man-to-man -man coverage in that secondary. Very impressed with Kelly on that drive, making good decisions. Alvin Harper's first touchdown of the year. When you live by the blitz, you die by it. There's where it hurt Ole Miss. Giving Kelly enough time, he got the ball off to the right man. Greg Burke now on to attempt to tie this game up at 13.28 to go in the second period. He does exactly that. And with 13.28 to go at Neyland Stadium, we are tied. Tennessee 7 and the Ole Miss Rebels 7. Archie, look at the drive for Tennessee. They did pretty much what they wanted to do, and that is run the football. Well, they mixed it up well. I really think they set up their run, though, with those nice play action passes. After, when they get in high formation, Ole Miss has got to respect their running game. They got to respect Webb and, and the, the off tackle play. I thought it was good, good play call on the part of Tennessee running those play action passes. And I said Kelly threw to the right man, and then Kelly tucked it and ran instead of putting it up for grabs. It was an impressive drive by Tennessee. Kelly, two rushes for 18 yards, really predominantly thought of as the passing quarterback in the duo of him and Sterling Hinton. 
but he made the right decision twice on the drive and hit the open man here for the touchdown. Doug Jacobs got the arm up, but Kelly threw it underneath him for the touchdown. Mike Keese on the sidelines, Mike. Bob, the tone has really changed down here. Tennessee looked like a team that was going to be snake bit early. They were all standing around staring at each other while Ole Miss, led by former of all Marco Vanek, was just wild on their sidelines. Now Tennessee's got the enthusiasm and the spirit back, and Ole Miss is a little bit down. So can Ole Miss pull off the upset? That's a big question. But if they've got the enthusiasm that they've got right now, they've got troubles because it's a very, very down Ole Miss sideline. Tennessee's back pumped. Go figure. Nine plays, 74 yards, took 338 for the touchdown, and the score was Kelly seven yards to Alvin Harper. Bob Ole Miss has been a disastrous second quarter team this year. Their opponents have scored 117 points. Ole Miss has just scored 50 in the second quarter. Ole Miss will get the ball right here as Burke will kick it off. Now he's going to squib it. That's exactly what they did last week. Swatzel picks it up, fumbles it, gets it back, and is going to be knocked out at the 25-yard line. Swatzel the up back. Got it. Dwayne Dotson led the charge along with Kelly Days for Tennessee. Kickoff coverage team really swarmed in there too, Bob. They look like they're pumped up with some enthusiasm, diving on the pile, trying to get to the ball. Let's see if John Darnell can keep the magic going. He is one for two and drives for touchdowns. This will be the third time Ole Miss has had the ball. It's a tie game, seven all with 13.22 to go. Darnell again looks. He's got a man over the, open over the middle. It's intercepted by Pickens. Pickens is spun down at the 30-yard line. There is a marker down on the field. Pickens cut in front of Willie Green and picked it off. His second interception. We'll see if it stands. Harper has picked up the flag, so Tennessee will get the football. Preliminary indication was against Ole Miss. The flag's up. The play stands, Bob. Randy Baldwin made the stop, but Archie, that time he threw it in the trap. Right. It was an eye formation. Play action pass. Pretty good drop by the linebackers of Tennessee. Pickens, we talked about what a great athlete he is. Didn't seem like a lot of effort from Willie Green to get the ball. That's been a wrap on Green. We talked about that in the pregame show a couple of times. In big games, he just didn't go for the ball. No, he didn't that time. He didn't at all. Pickens with the interception. And Tennessee's going to work with Chuck Webb. He's blasting. Nice, strong tackle by Sean Cobb right in the middle. Big turnover there. That was one of the things that the defensive game plan was, was to create the turnovers. And, of course, with the great athlete Pickens in there. That's a big possession right now, Ron, I would think, for Ole Miss because you've got to stop them here, I think, just to, for a confidence standpoint. Tennessee needs to score just as well. They feel like they've got the turnover that they need. Coach Philip Fulmer calls this the orange zone from the 30-yard line in. 19 times this year, Tennessee's had possession. 16 times they've scored. Of the 16 scores, all but two of them have been touchdowns. Webb turns the corner, flag down, might be a clip. Mark Adams might have clipped out in front of the play. Pete Harris finally ran Webb out of bounds, but it's going to come back. As I was saying, Bob, 16 have been scores, 14 touchdowns. Conversely, Ole Miss has had the opportunity to stop people 16 times. 14 times of it, they have been scored a point. Let's see if we can watch. I think it was Adams that they threw the penalty, and he's number 83. Could have been a clip here, that long block on the part of the tight end. They got him for holding. Yeah. Regardless, it's going to come back. Well, that might have been right there. On the Maybe the wide receiver was holding on the yeah. defense. Terrence back. Cleveland holding. That's a long Goddard. block, as you know, Ron, for a tight end trying to block on that linebacker. I believe that was Mark Adams. Linebacker did a good job of stringing the play out, not giving him a way to go. So they mark it from the spot of the foul, holding. So it's second down and about six yards to go. Tennessee, the ball at the 26 yard line. Kelly looking again. Dumps it off screen play to Ansel. Miss covers it well and they knock him out short of the first down and again a penalty flag goes down. This time it's Godwin hitting or was it Harris who hit Amsler out of bounds. That's the second time that's happened. Archie just can't afford to have no. penalties like Boy, that. It's too tough to stop these people. You can't add on especially in in the orange territory as Ron said. Really uncalled for. Nice play by Harris reading the screen. Godwin's the guy who busted him out of bounds. Number 10. And that'll move it down. Close to the 10-yard line. Now, Tennessee, as you can see the penalties, Tennessee can get a first down here. It's just outside the 10-yard line. 
Two of those penalties have been off the playing field for the Rebels. Right in the same part of the field. One on Kelly, one on Amsler. 12-23 to go. We're tied at 7-all in Tennessee's threat. Here comes the Rebel Blitz. Webb breaks a tackle, spins down to the four-yard line. Archie, they came with a blitz, but they didn't get it. Well, they shot one of their defensive backs. He, was tur he turned him up, but Doug Jacobs had a chance to make the tackle. Webb's on the ground, Bob. Webb is hurt right now. And we'll take a close look at Chuck Webb. Tennessee's going to get the short yardage game in. No, it's not Webb. Anthony Morgan is down. We apologize for that. Webb uh, was the guy who carried the ball. Morgan was out in front of him blocking. If you remember last week in the game against Akron, Anthony Morgan made the catch and then was uh, banged into the turf and suffered a mild concussion. So he didn't practice a couple of days. Looks like he's all right. Yeah, just shake it up a bit. But they will watch him, and we'll see if he comes back into the contest. As hard as Webb runs and as quick as he breaks, he might have got ran over by <laughs> Webb. Exactly, probably what happened. 68 yards on the day. Webb's off to a great start. He's looking for 100 yards on the 1,000 yards on the season. And 100 yards today, maybe in the first half. I hope 100's all he gets today. Here's the Tennessee wishbone. Webb's to the near side. Who's not going to get the ball? Amsler does, and he is knife down. Nice penetrating play by Kelvin Pritchard. Tennessee now has a third down, and they need to get just inside the one yard line for a first down. Tennessee's offensive line, Ron, I think that's the one key thing that they've been healthy, they played well together as a team, and that was the one thing different from last year. They were hurt all the time. Every game this year, they've had the same starting lineup in except for one when Antone didn't make a start. Antone Davis, I'm talking about. Everybody else has been relatively injury free all year long. Here's Webb looking for the end zone. He's going to be close. He did. He got a touchdown, Tennessee, and the Volunteers take the lead. Chuck Webb has the 11th touchdown of the season. And the Volunteers lead it 13 to 7. Webb shows great power there. Inside play. Looks like Ole Miss may have him stopped short of the goal line. Just used his strength. Continued to move his legs. Did a good job of getting in the end zone. So Greg Burke will be on again to attempt the extra point. Lee England to hold. Chad Gooden will be snapping the ball for Tennessee. And Burke does his job again. Tennessee leads it by a touchdown. 14 to 7. As again, it was the interception by Carl Pickens that set up the 30-yard touchdown drive. And Johnny Majors has watched his volunteers bounce back from a 7-0 deficit to score two touchdowns here in the second quarter. Archie, it's amazing that Ole Miss has given up so many points now in the second period. I'm sure Billy Brewer just wishes they could skip the second quarter each week. Of course, a lot of those points, well, it was 117 on the year. And about 49 of them came in the Alabama game when they went crazy, but still. And Ole Miss defensively in the third period is pretty good. They've only given up 37 points all year. And that stands up. Right, and they've outscored their opponents 57 to 37. They've outscored their opponents in three out of the four quarters. This is the second one has been so tough on them. Webb now 14 carries and 71 yards. Webb, of course, had 162 yards last week against the Akron Zips. He's looking for his fifth 100-yard rushing day of this 1989 season. You know, Akron needs to work on that nickname. Good. Well, it was Zippers. It started off Zippers, and they shortened it to Zips. Oh, that, that is an improvement. 11:07 <laughs> to go, second period. Tennessee leads it by a touchdown. Here's the squib kick again. That's going to bounce around, be juggled, and finally corralled down by the Ole Miss Rebels is Jeffrey Holder, a guy with good hands, makes the play on it, and the Rebels will take over at their own 30-yard line. There's the scoring drive. Six plays, 30 yards. We have a three-yard run to take it in. And the drive took two minutes and seven seconds. Tennessee has scored on two consecutive possessions. Tennessee doing a great job with that squib kick, keeping the ball away from Pat Coleman. People have been kicking away from Coleman the last five or six games. Darnell on the options. Got a little seam. 
He's at the 40, and he's dragged down at the 46-yard line. Carl Pickens made the save. If Pickens doesn't get him, he's off to the races. Real plus for John Darnell to be able to turn up on that option. Not a lot of speed for John, but really does a good job. Usually makes the pitch. Tennessee, of course, respecting that pitch, allowing him to turn up. Pretty good block also right there by Bill Bush, 58 on the corner, and that helped Darnell cut it up. Darnell made a great move on Sean Walker. The linebacker was there to make the play, and he just cut right, right inside of him without Sean moving from being flat-footed. Think Ben picks up a couple right up the middle. Shazan Bradley there to make the stop on Think Ben. Very important for Ole Miss to try to get some type of drive going here, try to break this momentum that Tennessee has going in the second quarter. Yeah, and you also want to keep the ball away from Tennessee. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the biggest thing for the Rebels. Green wide to the left. Coming to the near side is Pat Coleman. Billy Brewer trying to find a way to soften up this Tennessee defense. They go up the middle. Baldwin breaks a couple of tackles. Fights his way close to the 36-yard line. Poor tackling by the Tennessee defense. That arm tackling there, isn't it, Ron? They were in position to make the play two or three different times. Pickens missed the tackle. Here it comes. Right there's one missed tackle. Jeff Rhodes, 57, was out in front. Tennessee's got another player down. Pickens dropped his head, didn't really look into the man, tackled him with an arm, and ran right through it. Preston Warren is the Tennessee player down. The Volunteers, of course, have had problems keeping people healthy in the secondary. Well, on the play prior, Bob Denson ran off the sideline limping like that bad chin he had with the calcium deposit was still bothering him. Preston Warren from Knoxville Catholic High School was a great two-way player at Catholic as a quarterback. He also played wide receiver and tailback and defensive back. And one time it even talked about going to Notre Dame. Jerry Faust, as a matter of fact, had recruited Preston Warren to go to Notre Dame, and then suddenly they had the coaching change at Notre Dame, and uh, Lou Holtz decided not to recruit him, and Preston Warren ended up here at Tennessee. Kenson's came back on it end of the game now. I guess the leg's all right. He's kind of gingerly bouncing around, testing it. I've got Warren up. He's coming to the sidelines. That's the starting quarterbacks for the, the volunteer defense. So this is Jeff Rhodes playing a good block on that previous run by Randy Ball. And Ole Miss is playing a lot of people today, Bob. A lot of backup people playing throughout the offensive and defensive lines. Under 10 minutes to go, to go now, second period. Think pad. Darnell on the option gets it out to Ashley. Ashley knifes it down to the 23-yard line. McCleskey makes the stop. He just came in to replace Preston Warren. Good fake that time. They got me. And Ashley took it to the outside. Well, timely pitch also by John Darnell. Darnell makes the fake coming down the line here. Option and off the linebacker there. Held the ball long enough to create the scene. Good block on the corner. Just a touchdown save and tackle to keep him out of the end zone. Ole Miss trying to tie things up here. This is the first down play, and they go right up the middle to Ashley. It's like John Darnell probably checked off again. As I mentioned earlier, offensive coordinator really lets John run the game on the field. Gives an opportunity to check off, read the defense. Up front, Tennessee has Tracy Hayworth, Martin Williams. Mark Moore and Marion Hobby in the game. Darnell needs just one more yard now to become the all-time passing leader at Ole Miss. He's much more concerned about getting a touchdown here. Oh, Willie Green's uncovered out here. Now they move out on him. Second down, five yards to go. Ashley on the handoff, not going to get the first down. He's inside the 15. Marion Hobby makes the stop. He needs to get to the 12. I think John checked off once again. I think he's a little upset with himself because he made the bad read on the option that time. He felt like he should have kept it and run the option to the outside. Probably could have done a little business out there, couldn't he, Ron? One of the few bad decisions he's made so far. He's really done an excellent job of running the option, making the right decisions, passing the ball. It's a pretty much an air-free game for the offense from Ole Miss. Well, Coleman and Green are split out again. They may come right back with it. Think Pan not going to get the first down. Now the decision. Javon Bradley came through and made a big play there to stop. Great tackle. That's
That saves the first down. Now, I guess you got to get points here. Let's see what Billy Brewer decides to do. That saves the first down right there. I believe. I believe they're going for it. Looks like they're bringing in their wishbone offense, Shiles. There's Bradley, who is an outstanding player in high school. McKinley and Swadzell probably come into the backfield, too. Shiles, the quarterback. Fourth and short. Darnell on the pitch. They got a first down. They've got it inside the 10 is Baldwin. A late hit. Late All flag. the volunteers. Baldwin rambles down inside the nine, and McCleskey came over. I think he's the guy who hit him late. Dead ball, half the distance to the goal penalty. Ole Miss coaches have a lot of confidence in Russell Shiles running that option play on short yardage situations. Red shirt freshman made the pitch out there, a lot of effort by Randy Baldwin. Opportunity for Tennessee to make that tackle. Good second effort by Baldwin to get the first down. Well, it wasn't McCleskey, it was Ernest Fields on the late hit. Ernest looked like he was trying to pull off there when he made the connection. I don't know. I guess since the two penalties were against Tennessee or Ole Miss on the other end, they're trying to even it up. They stay on the wishbone. They pitch it back to Baldwin. Baldwin gets close and scores a touchdown. Randy Baldwin on the score. His seventh touchdown of the season, and the Rebels pull within one. Well, that's just old power football right there. It's a wishbone backfield, but he just pitches it to Baldwin. Everybody else leads, and Good blocking up front. He sticks it in the end zone. You know, Ole Miss has not had a tailback rush for over 100 yards this year, and Baldwin now, Randy Baldwin, has 59 in this first half. Straight ahead kicker, Hogue, puts it up and throw, and the Rebels have tied things at 14 all with 7-10 to go in the second period. We expected an offensive shootout, and that's exactly what we've gotten so far. Neither defense has really, Ron, done a great job of shutting the other guy down. A lot of missed tackles, a lot of opportunities to stop somebody. Here on the replay, you can see the pitch sweep out of the wishbone. Baldwin doing a good job of finding the seam. There's an arm tackle, another missed tackle. He just lowers his head and great effort to get in the ball in the end zone. So they've got Russell Shiles, the quarterback, also in there. Throws a nice block. And Baldwin scores, and the game is tied up. Let's go to Mike Keith. Mike. Tennessee side Preston Warren apparently has a sprained right ankle. It looks like he will be able to continue. On the Ole Miss sidelines before the last drive, I was over there. An assistant coach was telling the players, hey, you knew Tennessee was going to be tough. Keep fighting like hell. That's a quote. That's what they're doing, and it was pretty indicative on that drive, especially on that fourth down play, Bob, where they absolutely blew Tennessee off the ball. Yeah, Mike, anything about Anthony Morgan yet? Anthony Morgan's injury is not serious. Bobby was just shaken up. He's going to be able to keep going. Ole Miss has tied it. Didn't throw a pass on the drive to the Rebels. Nine plays, 70 yards. Randy Baldwin with the touchdown, five yards out. Short kick again. And Dotson again makes the fair catch, his second of the game. They're booing, but he is not a running back. He's a defensive end, so he hadn't run the football. You don't want to take a chance to do it. Well, he knows how to get that hand up. I'm sure that's what the coaches told him to do. He's been coached that a lot in practice. <laughs> they've seen that short high kick, and they've told him to be sure and not try to be a star on Saturday afternoon. Just catch the ball and give us a possession. Don't let anything happen to turn it over. Brian Lee does a good job with that high kick. Bob, I've got Randy Ball and had him down for six touchdowns running and then one receiving before today, so he's got nine touchdowns on the year. That's true. Seventh rushing touchdown. Pitch again goes to Chuck Webb. Webb fights his way out past the 30-yard line. Jeff Carter makes the stop again. I don't know why they don't run that play every time. Ole Miss hadn't got, stopped it yet. Webb's got such good ability of taking a blow and almost bouncing off of it. Here you on the replay, you can see him take the pitch. A couple players are really in position to make the tackle here, but he just kind of bounces right along and keeps his balance and makes extra yardage. Power back with great feet. Reggie Parrott in the game coming off an injury. Finally getting to play the first time in a couple of weeks. A lot of yards in the first half as you just saw. Here's Webb picking his way again. What a run. There goes Chuck Webb and he's finally dragged down at the 45 yard line of Ole Miss by Chris Mitchell who was the last guy between Webb and the goal line. Oh what great moves by Chuck Webb. Got some arm tackling going on by Ole Miss too. Runs right by Jim Lentz. 23 yards on the Webb scamper. Ronnie just has such great balance. Great balance cutting ability. He's going to make this game into a track meet if the way things are going right now. Baldwin and Webb, I wonder if we lined them up together, who would go the farthest, the fastest? He's going to have turf tongue if they keep this up. <laughs> Anthony Morgan's back in the game, but the handoff goes to Amser right at the middle. He is stuffed 
by Kelvin Pritchard, who's done an outstanding job so far anchoring that Ole Miss front. Pritchard's a guy out of Atlanta. He came out at the same time as Tracy Rocker. Rocker went to Auburn, and Pritchard went to Ole Miss. Linebacker Gary Abai checks out for Ole Miss. I mentioned earlier, Bob, Ole Miss playing a lot of people, both sides of the ball today. 5.44 to go. Tie game, 14 all. Kelly going to throw. It's got one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. Alvin Harper makes the catch and has a first down. All right, so a play by Tennessee, just a three-step drop by Kelly. They bring their outside receiver to the inside, turn the slot man out. Ole Miss had a blitz. Well-executed play. Chris Mitchell again makes the stop. That's the second time he's had to make a one-on-one -on -one tackle in the open field. Tennessee deployed people all over the field. They had two wideouts to one side, a wideout on the back side. He read the defense well and hit the proper man. 5.20 to go. Second period. Clock runs. Handoff up the middle. That's Tony Thompson. He's stuffed after a pick of a three. I think Tennessee coaches are allowing Andy Kelly to also check off. He reads the outside linebacker for Ole Miss. Walked out on a wide receiver. Checks off to the off-tackle play to Chuck Webb. Philip Kent and Doug Jacobs make the stop. No, that's, I'm sorry, that's Tony Thompson. Tony Thompson. You don't Thompson see goes out and Webb back in. Chuck's now. tired. Yeah. He's rested now. He's <laughs> back in there, though, which might be bad news for Ole Miss. Yeah. Second and seven as you look at the crowd here at Neyland Stadium. Another Capacity crowd on hand, over 90,000 to watch Tennessee play football in Knoxville. Pitch, Webb, bad pitch. Webb scrambles back after it and falls on it. So that's going to be a big loss of about 15 yards or so. Just a bad pitch, Archie. Looked Biden. like a bad pitch, and it looked like the option was there. If he had got it in his chest, Webb would have had additional yardage. But it looked, too, that Webb kind of counterstepped there and really wasn't moving on the flow of the ball. Last week, I know there was uh, five turnovers by the Tennessee offense, and two of them came on plays where really uh, a player didn't move on the option. One week, at one time, it was the fullback, and another time, Kelly had to kind of double clutch the pitch, and of course, he got the blame for the fumble, but it wasn't really his fault. I told you, he's tired. Under four minutes to go. Third down and 21 for Tennessee. Kelly's uh -oh. got run, room on the sideline, but he guns it up. It's going to be complete, but short for the first down. Mark Adams makes the catch. Harris blasts him. And now Johnny Majors has the decision. The ball is going to be marked at the 32-yard line, which would make it oh, about a 49-yard field goal, and they're going to try it. Oh, this defense allowed Kelly to get outside of containment, buy some time, and get a completion there. Greg Burke is coming on. Burke this year from... 40 to the 49 yard line is two out of two. This will be a 49 yard attempt to put Tennessee in front. Got enough leg. It's good. Greg Burke, 49 yard field goal. And the Volunteers lead it 17 to 14. 2.59 to go in the second period. The Volunteers now lead it by three at Neyland Stadium. You knew Duke. 17 14. Tennessee is taking the lead on the Greg Burke field goal. And now the Ole Miss Rebels will get the ball back. Burke now is 8 of 9 on field goal attempts. As long as before that kick was 45 yards at UCLA. So now Burke is going to kick it off again. This time he hits it long. It's going to be taken by Ashley at the 10. Ashley needs trouble and needs some help and gets rolled out of bounds at the 21 and a flag flies. Not a good job by the return team for Ole Miss. Had some people just standing around. I'm not sure Ashley followed his blockers. Wes Lowe made the stop for Tennessee. And it's going to be a clip against the Rebels and that will back him up even more. Well, there's nothing more frustrating for an offense, especially a quarterback, to be begin a drive, get a penalty on the return, on a poor return at that. Jimmy Harper makes the call, and now they will mark it off. It'll go from the spot of the foul. And it will take it back inside the 15-yard line, down to about the little marker just outside the 10. Ole Miss, three timeouts left, 2.55 to go second period. The Rebels are down by three, and the Tennessee fans trying to get this defense cranked up. 
Darnell rolls and looks. Has some room. He's going to pick up about four yards before he skips out of bounds. That was a pre designed scramble play. John just drops and then rolls. Fullback tries to hit the end, allow him to get outside. But though the tight end was running through the middle, really not anticipating a pass, and Pat Coleman seemed to be open. John looked like he was run all the way. Stops the clock. Big drive for Ole Miss. You really like to get a first down or two here and not have to punt the football prior to the half. Darnell looking again over the middle. Pass is complete to Coleman. Pat Coleman gets across the 22 yard line. That's a first down. Big play and throw by Darnell to Coleman. And Keith Denson makes the stop for Tennessee. Well, it was a nice play and a nice call. I think this is something Ole Miss needs to do more of is get the ball in the hands of Pat Coleman. Actually, they've always loved to throw the ball over the middle. I mean, you looked to throw it over the middle, didn't you? Well, if these guys like to go over the middle, you throw over the middle. I was a little disappointed in Willie on that interception. They had the alligator arms there, didn't he, Ron? But, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Pat Coleman will go over the middle, and Willie has quite often, too. Darnell inside handoff to Baldwin. Gets close to the 30-yard line where Daryl Hardy pins him. Clock continues to run. Quick trap out of split backs. Good balance in the Ole Miss offense today, mixing up the run and pass. Ernest Fields scraped clear, though. He had a chance to make the tackle, and Baldwin just reversed right out of his arms, and the arm tackle missed an extra yardage. I've really been impressed with Randy Baldwin's ability to break tackles today. Here's Darnell. Picks up the blitz. Now throws it. He's got a man open, and he overshoots it. He had Jeffrey Holder running free along the sideline. The third time today, though, Darnell has overshot his receiver. But Darnell still with the... Uh, the last completion has become the single season yardage leader in Ole Miss history. So Darnell, the big day today. There's his totals as they stand now, 2033. So he jumps past Ken Austin. Be interested to see if Tennessee will blitz here with a third and four. It's a chance for him to get the football back before the half if they can create some kind of a situation to make Ole Miss punt the ball away. Looks like they're just staying back. Little swing pass, nothing going there. Maurice Shaw. Knocked out for a loss of three yards. Not good timing by Ole Miss. Looks like the ball was really a lateral as John Darnell threw it a little bit behind Maurice Shaw. Good defense on the part of Tennessee. Ole Miss will be forced to punt. Yeah, Marion Hobby widened out to make the stop, and Tennessee now wants a timeout to stop the clock. That could really turn out to be an important series right there. John, of course, had some time, stepped up in the pocket, threw high to Jeffrey Holder on that previous corner route and not being able to convert on the third down give Tennessee an opportunity before the half. So now the volunteers will think things over for you folks in the East Tennessee area. The Tennessee basketball team is in action tonight at the Thompson Bowling Arena. The volunteers taking on Marathon Oil. It's an exhibition game. Now the game, by the way, will not be broadcast on the Ball Radio Network. And of course, Tennessee next weekend opens up the season on Friday night as the Volunteers will be playing Austin P. That game will be uh, in Memphis in the Memphis State uh, Classic over there. Tennessee will play then Memphis State next Saturday night. And the game on Friday night will be televised on the UTV network. Check the local station in your area for the station which will be covered as Tennessee and Wade Houston begin a brand new era in Tennessee basketball next Friday in Memphis. Bob, Ole, Miss has some, Ole Miss has some fake punts in their repertoire today. I don't think they'll use one here, though. Childers booms it away. Woods signals for and makes the No, he doesn't make it. Well, he did. <laughs> Let's see. There's the penalty flag. I thought he did, too. He signaled for it and saw maybe well, he had some running room and took off. Well, he well, forgot. Well, you remember the last time he didn't signal for it and he didn't get a chance to catch the ball. Maybe he's trying to make up for that one. Well, that'll cost Tennessee. It's good play if you can get away with it, but he didn't get away with it. I think be. he's telling the official he was waving to somebody now. 43 yard. He's waving to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> 43 yard punt. Five yard penalty. Delay a game. 135 is what Kelly's got to work with and two timeouts. Tennessee leads 17 14. It's very important here for Ole Miss not to try to get some, some push up front, some pressure on Kelly. Don't allow him to move around. Volunteers with their speedy wide receivers in there. Also a tight end to the far side who goes across the middle. Kelly swings it out. And the pass is going to be incomplete. Tenor for Thomas Woods over there. Woods needs 16 catches to become the all-time leading receiver at Tennessee. Couldn't corral that one. So that will make it second down. 
and 15. Again, the delay of game penalty was a five yard penalty. It's a dead ball. 130 to go. 90 seconds for Andy Kelly and company. Now they shift the tight end to the wing back. And Kelly on the draw to Webb. Follows his blockers and picks up about six or seven yards. And the clock continues to roll. It's down to 120. Looks like Tennessee will go on the line. Put seven Ole Miss players down. Right in the middle, Sean Cobb is the tennis is the Ole Miss player that is down. That's Cobb a junior from Jackson, Tennessee, leading tackler for Ole Miss. This would really be a loss with so many people already nicked for Ole Miss on their defense. You know, it's amazing. Last year, Tennessee had all the injuries on offense and never could get things going. They finally got some people healthy. They won five straight games. And Ole Miss, of course, I've never seen a team with so many nagging and just little binged up injuries. You know, it, it's so unfortunate. It's like Sean Cobb's up and it's like he'll be all right. It's so unfortunate in years past, Ole Miss has really had some good defensive teams, oftentimes trouble moving the football. This year, really been explosive offensively, but with all the injuries, really haven't stopped people very well. The good thing that happened to Tennessee this year, Arch and Bob, was the fact that they had three timely open dates. And an open date with two weeks to get healthy for the next game really makes a difference. Kelly's going to be thrown down behind the line of scrimmage. Philip Kent penetrates and knocks him down. Now Ole Miss with three timeouts. They've got to make the decision. Do they stop the clock? They do. They call timeout. You know, Philip Kent's one of the injured players. Philip sophomore, Jackson, Mississippi. Was not supposed to play very much today. No, it wasn't. That's his third sack of the year, by the way. And Kelly is banged up and stunned a little bit. Kent really flipped him to the turf pretty hard. And that's Bo exactly what Ole Miss needed right there, Ron. When Bo bid invitations are on the table, a lot of injuries are kind of <laughs> go by the side. They're going to line up and play whether they can or not on a day like today. It's amazing what that adrenaline will do for an injury, isn't it, Ron? They got the rest of the year to get well. <laughs> Let's watch Kent. He comes up right up the middle. And just slings him down. Woo! Hit his head on the turf. <laughs> Kelly's a tough nut, though, for yeah, I think, Tennessee. I think he'll be all right. I believe it was probably just his head hitting that hard surface. 101 to go. Ole Miss with two timeouts left. Looks like and Ole Miss may come after it. Ten guys on the line of scrimmage. Elmore gets it away. That's a pretty good driving kick. Coleman backs up to his 31. A lot of orange shirts down there, and they get him. He's knocked out at the 35-yard line. The snapper, Chad Gooden, number 56, is the first guy down. Excellent coverage by Tennessee team. Pat Coleman very dangerous on punt returns, averaging 10.7 per return, fifth in the conference. 44-yard punt for Ken Elmore. The return is good for four. And now here comes John Darnell. He's got 50 seconds to work with. He's got two timeouts, and he needs to go 65 yards for a touchdown. Looking for Willie Green on the out pattern, and he's got him. Nice catch. Green stays in bounds at the 43-yard line of Tennessee, and of Kelly Days was there. Tennessee playing pretty soft in their secondary. Willie Green just runs a corner route behind the first defensive back in front of Perkins, the safety. Nice throw by John Darnell. 45 seconds, so that took about five seconds. Reed Hines goes wide to the left side. Willie Green has single coverage to this near side. And Darnell's looking for him. Now he's going to run. Moore trips him up. Mark Moore got a hand on him. Knocked him down at the 40-yard line. Pickup of two yards. So like Ole Miss will go on the line now without a huddle. Tennessee just dropped back in a two-deep zone with seven underneath. And they were trying to knock people around, keep them off the line of scrimmage to get deep very fast. And Darnell didn't have really an open receiver and tucked the ball up. Good play by Mark Moore to trip him up before he got past the line. 17-14, Tennessee leads it with 34 seconds remaining in this first half. Of course, the Rebels have the Egg Bowl coming up with Mississippi State. Tell us the story of the Egg Bowl, aren't you? Big game. Big game. Uh, what about the name of the Egg Bowl? <laughs> just, we'll look that up with the media guys. I was just reading that. Uh, <laughs> I'd forgotten it, too, to be honest with you. I know Billy Brewer has had a... I think it's just lost to Mississippi State in the Egg Bowl one time during his playing days and coaching career at Ole Miss. I want to know about the alumni game last spring, Archie. They had a picture in the media guide with Coach Brewer scoring a touchdown on an interception well, from a pass I let, by. I let one get away from me, and then Coach Brewer broke a lot of tackles in getting to the end zone. We had I'll a lot take of your word for we it. We had a lot of fun playing that game. 
Well, the decisions have been made, and Darnell comes to the line of scrimmage. Looks like Tennessee is up tight. They're dancing. They're coming. There they're... they come. Darnell keeps it. 35 yard line, short of the first down. Clock runs 25 seconds. Oh, hey, time out. One timeout left. One timeout left. John Darnell gets up limping just a little bit. Mark Moore makes the stop. 15 seconds. Darnell across the middle. The pass is low and deflected. Broken up by Pickens. That was intended for Pat Coleman. Once again, great anticipation by that athlete in the middle, Pickens. Aren't you surprised that a guy that has not played secondary since last year, or well really two years ago, because he played wide receiver all last year in his redshirt year, has been able to step in and play such a such a big role? Well, he, he just is such an impressive looking athlete. I, I don't know where I've seen two better, whether well, I know they're both redshirt freshmen, but Webb on the offensive side for Tennessee and Pickens on the defense. 11 seconds to go. It is Tennessee 17, Ole Miss 14, and we'll be back for the final few seconds of the half in just a moment. 11 seconds to go. The Rebels have a fourth down. They don't go for the field goal. Darnell on the option. Baldwin's got a first down to the 29 yard line. And now the Rebels, the clock will stop for the marking of the first down. Ole Miss will hurry their field goal unit out. Now they'll take the final timeout. They've got their timeout. They might as well use it. So he's trying to trying to bust a big play on the option really in their two minute drill a little bit surprising they did a pretty good job though getting down there at least they've gotten in position to attempt the field goal. And Lee will come on to try it Brian Lee a freshman a little bit inconsistent this year he's 10 of 17 overall and they will mark this one at the 30. Seven yard line, so it'll be a 47 yard attempt. I'm sure, this will be a big boost for the freshman. He's actually done a good job throughout the year for a freshman, 10 of 17. This would be his longest of the season if he gets it. Got good leg on it, and he missed it. Clock runs out at the end of the first half as Brian Lee misses the field goal. It was a field goal by Greg. Mike, thanks very much. Stirring halftime performance here at uh, Neyland Stadium with the pride of the Southland Band, the Ole Miss Band, and, of course, Lee Greenwood. Archie, you pretty stirring first half for the Ole Miss Rebels. They've hung pretty tough. Well, they did hang tough, and they had uh, first, uh, 14 first downs to 17, of course, of Tennessee. Uh, I think that's impressive. Total yardage, Ole Miss had 232 yards, Tennessee with 188. For Ole Miss, a couple of impressive statistics from offensive people. John Darnell, 9 of 12, 92 yards. Randy Ball with seven attempts and 65 yards, two touchdowns. His longest was 17 yards. Of course, what more can you say about Tennessee than Chuck Webb? 17 attempts. He's already over 100 yards with 114. Earlier we had said we had said 95, but I believe they must have given the fumble to the quarterback mm -hmm. instead of yeah. Chuck Webb, and so he got he didn't get a loss right there and has 114 yards. Big half for Chuck Webb with the one touchdown in Tennessee. Of course, there are the total yard rushing stats. Ole Miss with 148 and, and Tennessee with 124 and Chuck Webb has most of those 114 in the passing yards. And John Darnell's done a pretty good job. Well, Ron, let's talk about Tennessee defensively. Uh, this is basically what Tennessee was concerned about, being able to slow down and stop Ole Miss. And I think that first drive and Ole Miss took it right down the field and scored really, uh, I guess, jarred Ole Miss to say, hey, we can play with them. Exactly. The game plan Tennessee had, of course, coming after him, putting pressure on Donnell, was not successful. He made some good decisions, checked off, got rid of the ball early, did the things that a defense that gambles on the blitz will do and give to you, reacted well, and as a result, they've really kind of got the momentum going into the start of the second half. You saw Ole Miss had six penalties in the first half that really hurt him and helped Tennessee score one of the touchdowns at the Volunteers gained in the first half it's Tennessee on top 17 14 and here we go in the second half Greg Burke to kick it off and he drills it again Ashley finally corrals it Ashley's got a scene he's at the 30 Greg Burke the only man to beat he's knocked in Ashley it's a foot race and he's going to beat Thomas Woods for the touchdown that squib kick been concerning Ole Miss all day. They haven't done a very good job with it. That one's bobbled a little bit by Tyrone Ashley. And 
he broke, we commented earlier, he really didn't do a good job early following his blockers. That time, went all the way to the left, had a huge crease over there, one blocker out in front. What you run with great speed right down the sideline. What you try and do on a return like that, Arch, is you want to kick the man coming down the hash out, the next man in. It creates a big seam with the ball being kicked to the other side, the backside men covering, kind of relaxed there. Great job by Ole Miss executing, getting the ball all the way across the field, hitting the seam, and from then on it was a foot race. The fans are just settling into their seats with their hot dogs after halftime. And Ashley gets them on their feet with a brilliant return. We said Woods, it was really J.J. McCluskey, number six, that was trying to, to run him down. Greg Burke is blocked. He was the last man, and McCluskey tried to run him down and couldn't do it. Tyron did a nice job of just fielding that kickoff. Boy, he reached his hand out of that ball had gone by, and Ole Miss would have been in big trouble. That took 12 seconds to give the Rebels a lead, 21-17. Talking about a thunderbolt, that's it right there. So Ole Miss has scored its first two possessions of each half. One with an impressive drive, one with a devastating touchdown return. Just as the kickoff return that, at, that Tennessee had against Ole Miss right before the half changed the complexion of the game down in Baton Rouge. The same here, the return by Ole Miss to start the second half puts them in the lead. Caught Tennessee flat-footed. The, the crowd hadn't even got back to their seats yet to start the second half, but Tennessee's already in the hole. It's not the longest kickoff return in Ole Miss history. Vernon Studdard had that in 1970. But it's up there, and it's a big one. Carl Pickens, he could break it. Finally run out of bounds. Boy, Pickens is dangerous. Don Price ran him out. So here comes Tennessee. We'll watch Andy Kelly. He was banged up, if you remember the last Tennessee offensive play. But he comes back out to the fray. Kelly, first half stats. One touchdown. Chuck Webb, number 44, the standing tailback. Runs up the middle. He gets a seam. He's got a first down. He's wrestled out of bounds finally across the 40-yard line by Jim Lentz. Nothing fancy about that play, just off tackle to the strong side. Big hole, once again, just great running by Chuck Webb. Last time Ole Miss returned a touchdown, or kickoff for a touchdown, was in 1986. J.R. Ambrose did it, 94 yards against the Vanderbilt Commodores. Carl Ashley has returned 23 kickoffs this year for right at 400 yards, a 17-yard average. Of course, most people have kicked to him and kicking away from Pat Coleman this year. Well, that's time it hurt. Webb, great cut to the outside. Just a foot race. He beats one man and is finally nudged out of bounds. Near midfield as Chauncey Godwin makes the play. Webb nearing 200 yards. <laughs> Webb starts up the middle here, stops, sees no hole, breaks it back to the outside. Free safety coming up, trying to make the tackle there. He runs past him, but the corner's there to react and hold him down for a small game. Pickup of about six. Make it closer to seven. Every time he touches the ball, Bob, it looks like he's going to break it all the way. Handoff right up the middle, Webb. He's corralled this time, short of the first down. Nice play. Calvin Pritchard comes through. Well, a few times Third today, we've been one. able to Two times they've been able to contain Webb. Richard, a great defensive player all year for Ole Miss. Tony Bennett checks in now along with Dan Wigley. Webb now averaging 7.3 yards per carry. His seasonal average is 5.4. Ole Miss needs two yards on third down. Now it's Tony Thompson. Cuts it back up and is going to be yeah, close. Very close. Had to see the mark on that one. He was just. Oh, they got a flag, late flag downfield. Don Price, one of the Tennessee linemen, going at it. Ole Miss is celebrating. I think it's against Tennessee. It looks he's going to be short of the first down where they mark it. Here's Jimmy Harper. It's a dead ball foul. Personal foul. So not only is it against Tennessee, it's dead ball, which means it's fourth down. Well, he makes a decision for Johnny Majors whether he's maybe been considering going for it on that fourth and short. Looks like Tom Mislinski downfield. 
got into it with cornerback Don Price. So many times, so foolish to do something like that, as you know, Ron. Sometimes the official doesn't see the first lick, turns his head and sees somebody take a swing and throws the flag. Tennessee, one man short, has to call a timeout here to start the third quarter. Nee Wood, number 17, runs out. They had only 10 players on the field. And yeah, that's a real costly mistake, hitting a man late. And there's nothing going on, and you had a chance to maybe go for it on fourth, and now you're backed up in your hole. You're going to give up field position by having to punt it away. Last time Tennessee gave up a kickoff for a touchdown was 1982. Greg Boone of the Duke Blue Devils. He only gets credit for 100 yards, but he was about five or six yards deep in the end zone. And again, that was a game in which Duke came in here and beat Tennessee. So, where old Greg is now. I don't know. He made it in the NFL for a while, didn't he? I've been hit the head a lot. I can't <laughs> remember who made it. I remember this guy in the NFL. Ron, did you ever sack Archie? Did you ever catch him? I couldn't get close enough to Archie. Hey, he was, was too elusive. I was scared. I wasn't elusive. <laughs> Ron, of course, played with the Falcons and also with the Rams, and Archie had that great career with the New Orleans Saints. Here's Kelly, wobbly punt. Coleman is going to watch it bounce, and it's going to skip out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Elmore tried to get it inside the 20, but missed, and so Ole Miss has got pretty good field position. Well, he, really, 36 yards. he really didn't get a good bounce. Coleman didn't attempt to field the ball. He was kicked wide. If it rolled toward the end zone, it could really back Ole Miss up. Ron, this is a big series for the Tennessee defense. It really is. So far, the ball has not seemed to bounce Tennessee's way. They need to make something good happen, a break, a turnover, hold them, do something to create the momentum going the other way because Ole Miss is in control of the game right now. Hardy's creeping up. Handoff up the middle of the thick pin. No, Darnell pitches. Nobody's there. And Tennessee's going to get the football. Baldwin was cracked on the pitch. And what a break for Tennessee. Well, Ole Miss went to the well too many times with that delay option. Nice play on the outside right there with ball, and he kind of stopped. Darnell went ahead and made the pitch, and no one was there, as you said, Bob. Here comes the blitz. The linebacker Hardy's in there. The man, the corner is already up in the pitch man's face. There's no chance for him to catch it. The ball's rolling free, and there's about six Tennessee players near it. Got to give credit to the Tennessee coaches right there. That's some adjustment that was made at halftime. Marion Hobby, the senior, makes the recovery on the missed pitch. And out Tennessee, they scored a touchdown when they intercepted a pass at the 30 and took it in. Now they can get the ball to the 22. And Webb's on the corner. He's got a barrage in front of him. Webb inside the five. And a flag down at the 20 yard line. Anton Davis was out in front. He might have been the player they caught holding. And that's what the penalty is. Well, another break for Ole Miss there. Like Tennessee had on the right play. Ole Miss was bringing the corner up. They had that pitch on outside to Webb. Now mark it from the 20, which is the spot of the foul. 10 yards holding against Tennessee. Tennessee was in that orange area. The one Coach Fulmer always talks about having to convert once they get inside there. And here's a penalty on them that, that helps them beat their self, moves it back out to pass the 30-yard line. Couldn't really see from that angle who was... The player holding. Morgan and Harper go wide to the right. Woods to the near side. And that's Reeves in the slot. Now both teams have been penalized six times. Kelly going long. Got a man. Woods to the 12 yard line. That's a first down. Just did pick up the first down. Good crossing pattern. Thomas T.D. Woods out of Gallatin High School in Tennessee comes across, makes a big plus. He knows he's going to get hit here, but look at him concentrate on the football and make sure he catches it right in. Well, a nice throw by Andy Kelly. Good blocking up front of the Tennessee line, giving Kelly all day to locate his receiver coming across, across the middle, and he puts it right in there. Woods now 15 catches away from the all-time Tennessee record. Tennessee has it first and 10, and mark it at the 12. Pitch goes to Webb. Needs a break, and gets hammered down at the five-yard line. Chris Mitchell comes up again to make the stop. Pete Harris there. They've been really all over the field today for Ole Miss. Ole Miss coach is very excited over the last few weeks about the play of Chris Mitchell. Really come on in that strong safety position. Really been a leader on the football team. Alvin Harper out there throwing a block for Chuck Webb. Tennessee needs three yards now for a first down. And the ball's at the five-yard line. Tennessee trying to gain the lead back. Ole Miss leads it 21-17 with 12 minutes to go in the third period. Uh, Adam 
comes in motion. Webb gets the pitch. Bobbled again. Webb is going to be knocked down at the 11-yard line. Well, both quarterbacks have a problem with the pitch. That was just a straight pitch out of the eye formation. Webb just couldn't get a handle on it. This time, Webb is down. Webb apparently fell on the shoulder. More importantly, that moves Tennessee back to the 10-yard line. But they'll have a third down situation as they look at Webb. Let's see if he fell on the football arch. Looked like ball. the ball hit the fullback. Didn't well, it, it may have. The ball was behind him. Yeah, actually, the old Miss guy just came in late, really didn't deliver a lick. It may have been hit, hitting that turf. He's still down. It looked like he fell on the back of his knee, too. And it, it, he may have been in that position just because of the pain in his knee. We'll have to see when he gets up. But let's hope it's nothing serious. Well, Pritchard came in behind him, and maybe he caught a knee in the back of the head or something, too. We'll just keep an eye on Chuck Webb. Here it is again. There's the, the pitch. I think it did hit Poles. Well, many times it's hard. That fullback. He's up. Webb well, appears to be all right. As Chuck Webb, the outstanding redshirt freshman from Toledo, makes his way to the Tennessee sideline. Here's a big play for Tennessee. Harper's at fullback. He will switch to a wing spot now on the left side. Kelly looking for the end zone. Kelly fires. Got a man open. Harper, touchdown. Is that a one-handed Un catch? Or Unbelievable what? There's a catch. Down. There's a flag down. Richard saying it's a holding penalty. Another hold on Tennessee. I'll tell you, what a great catch, though, by Alvin Harper. He came from the slot on this near side and cut right to the post. Well, he did catch Ole Miss off guard. They shifted Harper into that slot on the left side. That really gave him four wide receivers. I think Kelly was keying in on him all the way and matched him up with a linebacker, dropping back in the zone. He was wide open in the end zone. The ball thrown, though, too far in front of him. He made an unbelievable one-handed catch. And it's all for naught as they bring it back with a hold. They call it a hold on John Fisher, the Tennessee center, trying to stop Kelvin Pritchard. Yeah, they ought to put that in the highlight film anyway. What a great catch by Harper. Now Kelly's job's a little bit tougher. Still third down, this time 18 yards up to in go. The blitz. Here they come. Don't get to Kelly. He's got time and throws incomplete this time. Same guy, Harper. Instead of going to the post, he went to the flag and didn't get there. Richard again putting pressure on Kelly. Yeah, but not enough. They really picked up the blitz pretty well. Kelly just didn't do a good job delivering the football. Ole Miss was in a tough situation coverage-wise because of that blitz. Even if the pass would have been completed, though, I think it would have been short of the first down because it was low and away, and he would have had to dive to make the catch. Right, right. If he had got it to him, though, it would have been tough for Carter probably to keep him out of the end zone. Burke trying to make it a one-point game. England to hold. This will be a 40, or, excuse me, 37-yard attack. And Burke's got plenty of leg and drills it right in the middle. Boy, Burke has been a consistent place kicker for Tennessee, now hitting 9 out of 10 this year. And now it's a one-point game. As the Ole Miss Rebels lead the Tennessee Volunteers 21 to 20, with 11 minutes and 22 seconds left to go in the third period. We'll be back to Neyland Stadium in a moment. Johnny Major's trips have cut it to 1, 21-20. With 11-22 to go, we'll wind up see what they do here on the kick. They're going to kick it to Ashley. Last time he touched the ball, he went 95 yards. Oh, this is Coleman and Ashley are back discussing how they're going to line up. Ashley to the near side, Coleman to the top side. And there's the squibber. Again, batted around. It's still loose, and Ole Miss falls on it. That was Holder down there, and also Maurice Shaw covering things up. So the Rebels with the one-point lead taken at the 25. Tennessee is kicking the ball with the kicker on the far away hash with just three men to his outside. They've got eight men from the hash in on the other side of the field. Anytime that Ole Miss can get back to the high side, they've got an alley to run with. Preston Warren still not in there at the secondary slot for Tennessee. It's McCluskey and Denson in the corners. Darnell, there's the pitch again. This time they get it to Baldwin, and he gets to the 30-yard line. Daryl Hardy corrals him, and all along with the Shazan Bradley. Well, Ole Miss comes right back with the option play. Tennessee Red, of course, on the previous drive, created that fumble, allowed them to get three points. Ole Miss feel like they've got to run that play to be successful with their offense, though, and they come right back with it. John Darnell to Randy Ball. There's a scoring drive again for Tennessee. 
Baldwin from Griffin, Georgia, the same hometown as a former Tennessee great, Willie Gold, now in the Los Angeles Raiders. He wasn't bad, was he? No. He did okay. still isn't bad. <laughs> Javi putting pressure on the pass is complete. Nice catch by Coleman, and he's wrapped up by J.J. McCluskey. Well, it was a nice catch out there by wide receiver Pat Coleman. Pat just 5'7", 170 pounds from Cleveland, Mississippi. Junior college transfer. John Darnell on the spread out, man uncovered for Tennessee. John just has to take him on and deliver the football. Remember, McCluskey is the walk-on who has been playing wide receiver until last week. And now he's in a clutch situation with Preston Warren out. He's got man-on-man -man coverage this time. Big pen. Pulls his way to about the 44-yard line, which is on Bradley again, is there to make the stop. It's that same option play. This time, though, he gives it to Thigpen before he reverses. Tennessee does a good job of shutting it down. Archie, you got to do that. I mean, you got to give it to the fullback once in a Just while. Just try to keep him on. It's hard play to, to read where John turns his back to the defensive end. Under 10 minutes now to go, third quarter. Ole Miss leads by a point, 21 20. Darnell's got a man open. That's Willie Green. He's got a first down inside Tennessee territory. Racked out of bounds by McCluskey and also by the covering Daryl Hardy. But the Rebels have another first down on this drive, and Darnell continues to be very accurate. Well, Ole Miss set that play up. That time looked as though it would be an option. Then John just retreated. Willie's in the slot, just ran a quick out out there. It's off the same series. Willie with just one catch one, two, one, two, three, in the first half. Tennessee not having a defensive back really close. They went for the fake. The play selection's really setting it up. Darnell missed the handoff. Yeah, there. they blew the side of the draw play. Some confusion there. The back didn't slide over. John had to peel it and eat it. And Tracy Hayworth is there to pin him. Hayworth has really been a very consistent player from Tennessee out of Deckert. Tennessee with 47 tackles coming into the game. And Darnell is wrapped up. Let's go to Mike Keith now, Mike. Bob, the news on Chuck Webb is that he apparently has a bruised rib cage or lung, one of the two. They're taking precautionary measures. We do not know how serious his injury is at this time. We'll be back with more. Mike, what, also check on Preston Warren, if you would, to see where he is. 8.52 to go. The clock runs. Second down. Here's the blitz. They get it out. Baldwin can't catch it. He was looking to run. Pickens came up from free safety, and Baldwin just dropped it. He's got pretty good hands, Archie. He didn't drop many. Well, he's caught 18 passes prior to today's game for 140 yards. Had a touchdown pass receiving. Just kind of took his eyes off that one prior to the ball getting there. He's been real effective for Ole Miss on that very play on the swing pass. That's something in blitz coverage, though. Pickens wasn't really quick getting over there. When you send your linebackers, there's no help. You've got to react in that man coverage. We're watching Chuck Webb. They're taking his shoulder pads off, put him back on. He's at the 30-yard line. They're wrapping up his ribs. And we'll see if he comes back in. But this is a big third down play for Darnell. And Tennessee showing blitz. Handoff goes up the middle. Not much there as Maurice Shaw gains a couple in Ernest Fields. Knocks him down. The Rebels are going to have to put it away. Tennessee once again electing to go with the blitz, trying to create something defensively. There's Webb. We'll see if he comes in this next series. Woods will drift back now on the punt. It's fourth down. As the Rebels will get Charles Childers into the game. There's Childers, two Childers. runs today. Childers has been a very effective punter for Ole Miss this year. Not a great average of 39-5, but done a good job of kicking away from people, not allowing run backs. This is going to be a good one. High, lofty kick. Woods is knocked down, going for the catch. And that's going to be another penalty on Ole Miss. All right really keep the thrill in those punt returns. Something different every time. Last time he signaled for a fair catch and tried to run for it. This time he signaled and couldn't get to the ball. And he also got planted one time, if you remember, right. when he caught one. Lewis Gordon was down there covering, ran into the return man. Well, that's just, you know, Woods is running around. Ole Miss is trying to find the ball. And it's one of the things that happened. It's not an intentional play. Gets Tennessee out of the hole, though. First down on the 31. Here come the volunteers. Andy Kelly has gone all the way to quarterback. <laughs> 7.57 to go. There are the penalties. Thompson in at tailback. Tennessee down by a point. Almost trying to dig in defensively. Well, uh, Thompson. 
Santos nudges it out for three or four yards. Tony Bennett makes the stop. Ole Miss with some substitutions on their defense. Inside linebackers Gary Abad. Also Reggie Parrott in an inside linebacker spot. Roger Hancock playing at the strong safety position. He's been a linebacker in the past. He's taking the place of Bubba Gunner, a fine linebacker who had to quit football this week, Bob. He discovered he had but one kidney after an injury last week. Kelly steps up and fires, and it's complete to Woods out of bounds. First down. Don Price is over there to get him. You know, the Gunner story is interesting, the fact that he just went in for a they are checking out some injuries and they found he didn't have a kidney. He's only got one. And I know it's a big blow well, to Bubba. Such a big blow to the team and also to Bubba. What a fine looking kid. A sophomore, 6'4, 205 out of Memphis. Just one week you're, you're playing, expecting three more years of football, and all of a sudden they tell you you can never play again. Kelly's got a first down for Tennessee. Kelly's going to throw. Gets away from Bennett, dumps it out to Amsler. Amsler. Breaks a tackle and gets inside the 45-yard line of the 43. Ricky Richardson and Gary Abai make the stop. Amsler, big-time load, getting outside of it. He's a tough guy to bring down at 235 and 6'2". Yeah, Amtrak, I believe, is his nickname now. He's like a runaway locomotive. He turns up field there on the, the counter option. You bring Steele out to block on the bootleg, and he drops it off in the flat, and Amsler does the rest. Billy Brewer was really concerned. He said Amsler really hurt Ole Miss last year. At 61 yards and just a cameo performance in the second half last year. Did a great job. Webb's back in the game. That doesn't have much there. His way for three. You know, the thing that's amazing, Ron, about Webb is you think, oh, he's not got much on this play. He's only got a couple. Then you look up, and he's got four or five yards. Very rarely do you see Chuck Webb ever get knocked backwards. He's got good speed. He's got good body lean. He takes a blow and goes forwards every time he gets the ball. Not much weakness as a running back. Great balance there. Should good quickness in his feet. Doesn't turn it on the power when he has to. That was a good looking play action pass that Kelly ran since he executed on the previous play. Kelly. Looks to drop it off again. That's Amsler. Amsler being run down from behind though and is Knocked out by Lentz, but it's going to be a first down for Tennessee. Tennessee's going almost exclusively with this eye back set with three wide outs into the game. They're waiting to see whether Ole Miss deplores out to cover the backs and run the ball. If they stay inside to play the run, they throw it out in the flat. It's really a good scheme. It's got Ole Miss in a tough situation. The play action pass has been effective. Of course, Webb over 150 yards rushing on the day, and then Tennessee done a good job with their short passing game. This shows quick outs to the wide receivers. Here's a wishbone here on third down. Tennessee got a short spot. It's not a first down. It is third down and less than a yard now. Webb, the near tailback out of the wishbone. But they give it to the other guy. That's Amsler. He's got a first down. To the 32-yard line. Sean Cobb on the stop for the Rebels. Number 44, who again has been right in the middle of things as he has been all year for the Rebels. That front line for Tennessee pretty much has gone the entire way. Charles McRae, Maslinski, Fisher, Eric Still, and Antone Davis. Amsler's become a media darling here in town after last week. He caught a pass for a touchdown, threw one for a touchdown. He's had a lot more interviews this week than he has all year, is what he gets quoted in the paper saying. 5-17 to go. Tennessee now with a first down at the 31-yard line. Kelly, quick drop, quick pass, got a man there, one-on-one -on -one coverage, nice move by Harper, he lost the football, and it's going to roll out of bounds, what a break for Tennessee. There were three white shirts, they saw the football, they couldn't get to it before it ran out of bounds. Carter made the play. Here's the pass, Kelly on the blitz coverage, hits the short route, good move to elude the first tackler who reaches back, knocks the ball loose, there it goes from the nine mark, slowly, ever so slowly, just barely getting out of bounds. It was Don Price who made the play. Mike Keese on the sideline, Mike. Bob, Tennessee got another break. Chuck Webb, of course, back in the ball game, outfitted with a flak jacket. It appears as though he's just wearing it for cautionary measures. Don't no, think he's hurt too bad. No news on Preston Warren yet. We'll try to get something. Okay, Mike. Second down. Short. That cost him a first down. There's Roland Poles. He just barrels his way across the 20-yard line. Tennessee really doing a good job of mixing up their offense here. Ron mentioned earlier, three wide receivers, but an eye formation. They're just running about three plays, but very effective with them. 
Webb must be all right. He did a great job on the on the ball rolling close to out of bounds right before it was getting out. He dove in front of the old Miss player and kept him from recovering the ball, making sure that it was out of bounds for Tennessee. Yeah, pretty good screen on Chris Mitchell that time. Tony Bennett leaves for the Ole Miss Rebels. He's really just playing with one arm. He's just taping him up between plays and sending him back out there. Courageous effort by Bennett. They need comes a, a, blitz. a big play here. Kelly pressured, throws it, oh. missed Amsler. Good blitz that time by Keith Thompson. Late flag downfield. This might be against Tennessee. Woods just clapped his hand in disgust. Let's see. Yep. Well, Ole Miss had the costly penalties in the second quarter. It seems Tennessee is picking it up here. This is uncharacteristic of the Tennessee team. They have played so well. I remember against UCLA, they didn't even have a penalty the whole game. No turnovers. They've done a good job not losing the turnovers, but the penalty bugs really gotten to them here today. So that is a. I think he motioned an eligible receiver downfield. Anyway, the step off is five yards. Sean Cobb back in calling the defensive signals for the Rebels. There's eight penalties for Tennessee. 435 to go. It's almost 21, Tennessee 20, but the volunteers are driving. And Kelly's looking. Kelly fires it up, misses a man again. That's Mark Adams who can't come up with it. Clock stops, 429 to go. Pete Harris on the coverage. Rebels very fortunate. Kelly threw the ball wide, getting no, really no rush up front. Kelly with all day to look around and deliver the football. Good coverage by that old Miss secondary because they were deployed all over the field, but Kelly had nowhere to throw. Kelly has got to take this team 15 yards for a first down. He's got to get inside the 10 yard line. Single running back. That's Angela. Adams trying to pick up the blitz up the middle. Kelly. Yeah, that was a quarterback draw. Keith Thompson didn't buy it. Took a little gamble there. I believe he checked off, don't you, Ron? Trying to run the quarterback draw against that blitz. If you bust that first line, you could probably take it to the end zone. Sean Cobb with a quick feet, though, kept Kelly from penetrating. Now Tennessee has got. Aren't you got to concern yourself here, too? If you don't pick up all some yardage, you got another long field goal attempt. Well, they seem to be pretty effective on the field goals earlier. You know, I watched, watching Tennessee practice yesterday, it looks as though Sterling Hinton runs that quarterback draw a little better than Kelly. Kelly's not known for his niftiness back there as far as being a runner. Ole Miss has got now seven men up in the line of scrimmage, not blitzing. Kelly's got time. Now it breaks down and he's sacked. That takes him out of field goal range. Boy, Doug Jacobs really came in with a big play for the Rebels. Just a four-man rush. Ole Miss was showing blitz, then dropped back. Seven people in the coverage. And Kent was able to help Jacobs on the blitz. They just came right up the middle, Ron. Doug Jacobs, I believe he's playing at the right tackle spot. They might have had a little loop on right there. Lyman for Tennessee kind of set deep, and Doug just came right through him and got to the quarterback. So now Tennessee decides you're out of field goal range. Let's go for it. Fourth down, 27 yards to go. You've got to get to the eight-yard line. We'll quick kick this, Bob. They're not going to go for it. All right, the pooch kicker, Andy Kelly, is in. He's got the option to run or throw, but it's going to be a punt. Kelly has punted the ball seven times. They take a five-yard penalty, so you know Kelly's going to punt it down. I guess, what, Arts, the philosophy, just pin them up. You've got them pinned. Keep them there. <laughs> I guess so. Ole Miss. Certainly has to feel fortunate as regard to penalties. The way they've been able to Tennessee's control this football a great deal in the third quarter. It just has three points to show for it. And the clock kicking, uh, ticking, I should say, at 2.45. Tennessee's going to kick it right here. Kelly averaging 32 yards a kick in his seven pooch kicks. He still might throw it. We've got three wide receivers in. Kelly's going to let her pooch away. It's going to drift down and kick. Great kick by Tennessee's Kelly as Woods corrals it at the one yard line. Great job. You can't draw it on the bulletin board no. any better than that, but There's we've a got flag. a flag. A flag out by the 40 yard line. Tennessee illegal shift. Backfield in motion. And they're 
talking to Sean Cobb. I don't think there's a question what they're going to do here. I think Ole Miss secondary has got to have a little discussion over there now. If they try that again, they've got to get their defensive backs to fair catch that punt. Now Elmore's going to boot it long. And Pat Coleman will go in. A second chance right there. That's a key thing. Tennessee, another penalty. is really breaking their back. They had them pinned up. Now they're going to have to shoot for the works again on the punt. Chen Elmore. So scratch a brilliant pooch kick by Kelly. And now Elmore will try to do the same thing. He blasts it away. Coleman. Fair catch, 10 yard line. That cost Tennessee 10 yards in the exchange, but what a big 10 yards. Quite a difference from going from your one to the 10. You're still backed up, but at least you can throw it. You got some breathing room out on the 10 yard line. Tennessee fans not happy. Now the defense has got to dig in again. Tennessee's defense has had a good rest, though. They haven't been on the field much this third quarter. They ought to be fresh and able to get after some people. I think a key matchup here to watch is Coleman and J.J. McCluskey. They are paired to the far side of the field, the Ole Miss sideline. Darnell. Hands it off. Baldwin picking his way, trying to find running room. It does a nice job. Bob getting back to the matchup with McCleskey, even though Preston Warren's hurt, it was in the game plan. They've really been impressed with this freshman from Carnes and the job he's done walking on, playing hard. They wanted to get him in the game regardless of an injury or not today. So that's really not a, a big disappointment for Tennessee. I'll tell you what, that's not much blocking there. That's just good running by Baldwin. Tennessee had to play a ball 11 plays at 5 minutes and 58 seconds and didn't get anything out of it. John, John Darnell continues to call some plays on the line of scrimmage. Sometimes the players are having trouble Here's hearing the, the call. Hobby couldn't make the stop. Baldwin gets out near the 18. Another fly. Line. And that's a face match. Boy, oh boy. Henson, or Denson. Keith Denson is the man who will be caught. I'm trying to think that's at least, what, two or three face match penalties against Tennessee. Ole Miss had one against Chuck right. Webb. We've seen more flags out here today than the Bugle Corps usually carries all year long. <laughs> Baldwin just put a great move on Javi. Mary looks like he's limping a little bit. Going over 80 yards on the day. Came into today's game with 474 yards. Jeffrey Holder in the game at a wide out spot taking the place of Willie Green. Baldwin's biggest game of the year, 95 yards, and he's pushing that with one minute to go. Third period, the Rebels still clinging to a one point lead. He's showing blitz. They get there. Boy, what a stop. Think Penn was blasted by Marion Hobby, and Martin Williams was there as well. A oh, big league hit right there. I believe Tyrone Ashley was in the game at the eye back. Took that ball deep. Just Hardy. a host Tennessee players there. Hardy shoots the gap, hits him low, wraps his legs up, and gives the big shot for Hardy on the rest of his body. Clock runs inside 30 seconds now in the third period. Reed Hines is in the game in a slot position along with Willie Green. Darnell, the clock down to seven, four, three, two. Darnell just gets it off. Blitz, they pick it up. Darnell unloads to Green, and he's got it. Pickens rolls him out of bounds. I believe he might have stopped him short of the first down, though. One yard short to where they mark it. And Thigpen picks up that blitz once again. You can tell John really thought he was fixing to get hammered on the blitz. Thigpen kind of has to come from his fullback spot, go in there and try to cut that blitzer off. John gathered himself, made a good throw, and a nice catch out by Willie Green. Good Just long a, throw across the field. Yeah, deep sideline. Well, it's very tough on defensive backs, though, on the blitz. They've got man-to-man -man coverage. Here's the wishbone. Shows. I don't know. He might have gotten it just edged straight ahead. Ernest Fields there as the third quarter runs out. I believe he made it. Ole Miss, they're jumping on the sidelines. They're not stacking the players. As they line it up, we'll see if Ole Miss has a first down. As we head to the fourth period, the Rebels lead by a one. Mike Keith back on the Tennessee sidelines. Not only does the scoreboard tell bad news for Tennessee as the Vols trail Ole Miss 21-20, Junior quarterback Preston Warren reportedly will miss the rest of the ball game. His ankle has swollen up apparently very severely over the half. We, the first information we got is that he would be able to come back. He has not appeared in the third quarter and has not come back out for the fourth period, Bob. Yeah, Mike, I didn't see him on the sideline, and I was interested if he was there somewhere. I, I scanned it a couple of times and couldn't find it. 
Big play now. The Rebels got a first down on the mark of the ball. The student section, which is to the south end with the Rebels right as you look at your screen. They're trying to get Tennessee's defense geared up. The only touchdown in the second half, the kickoff return by Tyrone Ashley. And now the Rebels have it first and ten. Darnell over the middle. Green is wide open. He slips and falls at the 39. Carl Pickens was the closest man to him, but Ronnie was five or six yards off. Weren't even close. <laughs> Pattern and Willie Green run so well. Corner out. John, Dar John Darnell does a good job of looking off the secondary. Kind of pats the ball to his right. Willie runs that corner back on the left side. Steps out of bounds. Green has had a big day today. Willie's been a great football player for Ole Miss the last four years. There's Baldwin on the draw. She's on Bradley knocks him down. Fields also there. Really been impressed today the way offensive coordinator Red Parker and quarterback John Darnell have mixed up their plays, trying to keep the Tennessee defense off balance with the option plays and drop back passes, and just some high percentage passes. Green with four catches today for 77 yards, and he has split out wide to the left on second down. And it's six yards to go. Long five, really. Just started the fourth period. Ole Miss leads by a point. Darnell's got time. He's got a man open again. Oh, and he dropped it. Tough catch, but Coleman had a hand on it. And right out. I believe that was Jeffrey. No, that was Coleman. Jeffrey Holder's over there also. John, really, that time, for the first time on the blitz, had time. Ole Miss picked it up quite a way right away he dropped very smoothly into his drop but then threw it a little wide now the Tennessee defense and this crowd will get into it yeah this is a big play right here third down six Boy, Willie Green's got man-to-man -man coverage out here on the left side Darnell finds him he's looking right at Green and lost it into the end zone and McCleskey knocks it down Big play by the freshman from Knoxville Cards. Well, John recognized it was man to man. It's probably blitzing up front. He was just going to take a hope, go deep to Willie Green. Good coverage out there by McCluskey. Willie really did a good job just keeping the ball from being intercepted. Well, the ball came up a little short. Yeah. McCluskey's just five foot six. He would have been in trouble if it had been a jumping contest, but Willie turned into the defensive back there and really knocked the ball away from McCluskey. He had an op excellent opportunity for an interception. Yeah, the crowd here wanted a penalty on. Green, I guess, for an offensive interference. Fourth down. Five yards to go. Childress in again to punt. Sure, Ole Miss offense very disappointing coming away from that drive without any points. I kick that's going to be going down near the end zone. See if Ole Miss can get it. Nope. Skips into the end zone. Gerald Vaughn was down trying to get a hand on it. Couldn't do it. Yeah, Ole Miss had a couple people down there in position. They really just didn't get turned around attempt to catch the football. By the loads on the Tennessee offense now. Well, this crowd's coming to life. Boys, a lot of them here, too. This is an awesome place. Oh, this, of course, had a record crowd for the LSU game. It's a little different, a little short of this one, though. About half as many. It was a great day, and I got to see that game in Oxford. It was a great day in, in Oxford. I, mean, I haven't been back to this stadium since 1968, since they enlarged it, Bob. And that was a rough day. That's one day you want to forget that day. 68 and Ole Miss was you got that right. handled pretty good by Tennis. Here's Webb darting outside. Webb gets out to the 30 yard line close to a first down where Gary Abai makes the stop. Well, Chuck Webb just does such a great job of picking these holes. He almost come to a stop behind some linemen, then find a hole and just dart right through it. Here you can see it on the replay. Good concentration by Webb breaking through, finding the hole, cutting back, making people miss him, keeping the legs driving. 24 for 161. Mm. And counting. First, a second, a first down, Tennessee. Ball at the 30 yard line. Kelly. Nobody's open on the slant. Kelly's going to pick up five and skip out of bounds after picking up seven yards. Good coverage once again in the secondary, but really not enough rush or letting Kelly get outside the containment, pick up some positive yardage. Once again, it's that eye slot open formation. Tennessee mixing a run and a pass. 
keeping the Ole Miss defense off balance. Kelly had all the time in the world, just couldn't find anybody open, still managed to have a good game by scrambling down the sideline. Well, they've got, they just spread people out so well. Ole Miss has to be concerned about the great speed that Tennessee has. Three wide receivers spread defensive backs all over the field. Then they just come with about three or four basic plays. It's really a good offense. Now the sixth time Kelly has run the football. There's a pass, great catch by Woods. Flag is down. Don Price was there. Let's see if it's on Price for a holding. They may have gotten Don Price making contract, contact prior to the ball getting there. Actually, though, he's very fortunate. He, he tried to jump in front. If the receiver kept his feet, he'd have been gone about 60 yards. That's a first down for Tennessee on the pass interference. They'll just take it right at the spot of the foul. Kelly had to double clutch this pass there. He almost let it go and then brought it back and threw it again. It was almost touched down Tennessee. If he could have just kept his feet, Woods would have turned it up. Keith Thompson checks back in for Rich, Ricky Richardson. Ole Miss continues to substitute a lot of people in the game today. Woods third catch of the day. Hand off to Webb again. Big hole up the middle. Webb just rumbles down for another first down. I don't believe I can run through that hole. Tony I'm Bennett. Too old to try. <laughs> Finally gets him down. But Webb now over 170 yards on the day. Here comes the trap. Well, his offensive line really coming off the football. I tell you what, the line is a joy to watch when they work like that. They've got a chart up down in the, the room there with the offensive linemen called intimidation blocks when they knock somebody backwards and pancake them on their back. And haven't seen a whole lot of that, but they've knocked them off the ball quite substantially today. We'd like to invite you to join us every Monday night from August through April for Ball Calls, the hour-long statewide talk show devoted entirely to University of Tennessee sports. Each week we have interviews with players and coaches, plus we'll give you a chance to make your own ball call. That's every Monday night. Ball Calls on your local ball radio network station. First down for Webb, Tennessee. Clock ticks to 12.30. Ole Miss leads by a point with Tennessee on the move with Roland Poles. Fights his way to the 38. Sean Cobb there again in the middle. Right, Tennessee just hands off to the fullback just enough to keep Ole Miss honest in this high formation running game. You know, we talked about the great offensive line of Tennessee, and you really do have to be very fortunate, Bob, to keep people healthy throughout the year. Robert Henry was commenting yesterday, the defensive coordinator for Ole Miss, he has not started the same 11 people the entire year for Ole Miss. Injuries can really hurt. Kelly, check it off again. Moore and Harper wide to the left. The ball goes to Webb right up the middle. He's got a hole. Webb against Price breaks that tackle. Down to the 12-yard line. Doug Jacobs finally wrestles him down, but Chuck Webb just on individual greatness gets it down to the 12-yard line. Well, they're really, you can see really wearing them down on defense for Ole Miss. Kelly checked off to that draw play. They must have deployed out to cover the receivers, hit the hole right up the middle. Big yardage with Chuck Webb picking his way, breaking tackles, keeping it going downfield. Long. I'm not sure if it was a block by Thomas Woods or he just got in the way. Long blocks by the offensive line, just doing a good job of staying with their people. Ole Miss has got to make some type of adjustment. Got to get some better line play there to stop this running game. They'll be in trouble. They go to that overshifted offensive line and run that way with Chuck Webb. Not this time. Tony Bennett just big throws play. the blocker off and makes a big play. Bennett that time from Alligator, Mississippi. Just showed his strength and his quickness to get out there. There, Bennett threw off Antone Davis, just over out muscled the man, ran down Webb before he had a chance to get to the corner. Big play, old Miss. Well, we talked about Tony Bennett, of course, been injured the last, hasn't practiced in two weeks, one of Ole Miss's All American candidates. I don't think Todd Sandroni's been on the field today on defense. He's been in a couple of times on special teams. I haven't seen him on defense. Carter's in there right now. Here comes the blitz. Kelly finds it, picks it up, and hits his man. That's Woods again on the outside. Chauncey Godwin makes the stop for the rubbers. Kelly looks to his right on a three-step drop and then just wheels and throws that quick hitch pattern out to the left side. Chauncey Godwin with man-to-man -man coverage. If the pass is on the money, he might score. Yeah, the ball thrown a little low. Quarterbacks never throw the ball low. They're always <laughs> close. I threw a few low. There's Woods, another big day for Thomas. i would like to take one in the end zone right here. Tony Thompson on a tailback now. Third down play. Thompson gets it. He's got uh, close to a first down, maybe a yard short. 
Now the decision. I don't think there's any decision. I guess you take the field goal and go ahead if you're short. Well, I guess it kind of depends on just how short they are. They're going to measure it, and Tennessee will think about it. And they take well, a timeout. Tennessee out. take a timeout. I believe that's their second timeout. That'll leave them with just one. They had to take a timeout earlier when they only had 10 men on the field for the punt. That's how much Tennessee needs right there. The decision you make, you're down by a point, you kick a field goal, you're up by two. If you make a touchdown, then Ole Miss has got to score a touchdown to beat you. You've got to stop and think. Neither defense has really done a job as far as stopping people today. Coach Majors may decide to go for it, just feel like that he has to not only get the lead, but has to get more points on the board because the team that has the ball last will be the one that will win. You can order each issue of the official Neyland Stadium game program by mail and have your lasting souvenir of the 1989 Tennessee football season. Just specify the home game you want and send four dollars per issue to host communications P.O. Box one 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 two five Knoxville Tennessee three seven nine three nine. There are the rushing stats most of those by Chuck Webb. Tennessee's decision to go for it. Cotton Bowl, Sugar Bowl. All of the balance right here. Liberty. Yeah. Everything on the balance here. Fourth down, inches. Poles, Amsler, and Webb gets the ball, and he's got a first down and a touchdown. Chuck Webb behind Amsler and Poles. And that big offensive line puts Tennessee in front, 26-21. Well, you really, of course, Chuck Webb's a great bag, and you really do have to give credit to that Tennessee line the entire drive, pretty much throughout this second half. Just the penalties that stopped them somewhat. They've really come off the football. I'd say that's a good credit to Johnny Majors, too. That's a gutty call right there. Sure is. They drove the ball well down the field. They went with their horses on the stable. Of course, the Ole Miss defense patched up, labored, hurt, put together with just kind of string and whatever else they could find. Yielded the touchdown there, and of course the Tennessee defense is having an equally hard time stopping Ole Miss, but they're on the sidelines resting. Two-point conversion. We give Tennessee a seven-point lead. Webb. Oh, blast. Big stop right there by the Rebels. That's the first time I've really seen Ole Miss be able to drive Chuck Webb back the entire day. That was a big league hit by Kelvin Pritchett, fine defensive player. Here comes Pritchett on the inside charge. Doesn't get reached comes and butts it right down the numbers. Picture perfect tackle to stop the two point conversion. And that's a big stop because now Ole Miss if they can score a touchdown puts them right back in the lead. Now Chuck Webb for the day 199 yards on the ground. Check the last Here's the touchdown again Archie. Well, they got two backs Brent. in front. They get it to Chuck Webb deep. Of course he's thinking about getting about six inches. Great push by the offensive line on the right side. They take him right into the end zone. That's coming off the football. Yep. Great play. That's Eric Still, 79 at the bottom of the pile. Anton Davis, 78. Scoring play for Tennessee. 10 plays, 80 yards. Webb, a three-yard run for the touchdown. Tennessee this year has been consistent, Ron, in the second half of putting together long drives to eat up the clock and score points. As a defensive player, I always applaud an offense that can hold the football and give me a chance to rest before we got to go back out there to war. Well, I tell you, Ole Miss needs to put a drive together here now. Of course, they need the points, but they've got to give, give this defense a break also. Coleman's going to scramble back and pick it up. Trying to get to the wall. Breaks a tackle. Breaks two tackles. Still on his feet. Coleman, nice effort out to the 23-yard line. All of that, and he gets to the 23. That was great effort by Pat Coleman. You know, except for the one long one by Tyrone Ashley, though, those squib kicks have given Ole Miss a lot of trouble today. They've had a hard time finding the handle. Here it is, but it's almost to the point that the Tennessee defense covering on the play relaxed enough to create a seam and credit him right here. Look at this effort, running through tackles, pushing people off and keeping his leg dry, getting it out to the 29-yard line. Wes Lowe pending number two. Here come the Rebels. Down by five. Darnell's got a big chore ahead of him. Steps back and fires. Complete to Willie Green. Dances out of bounds. Well, nothing fancy there. Just a three-step drop. Good play to get the chains moving. Willie just that quick out. Fifth catch of the day. Tennessee did a great job in the third quarter, as I said, of controlling 
the football as Ole Miss wants to do now. Tennessee headed for nine minutes and 24 seconds. Ole Miss 536. Second and short. Darnell with his tight end to the weak side of the field. Hands up. Nope. Keeps it on the option. First down. John Darnell once again doing a great job of running the option, holding it to the last minute, making the pitch out to Ed Thigpen. And Bradley makes the stop. Mike, what do you got on the sidelines? Bob, during Tennessee's last drive, I had a chance to go over to the Ole Miss sideline. John Darnell and the whole offense is totally unimpressed with Tennessee's defense. They were very upset with themselves for not producing any more points and promised on the next drive to put it in the hole. So let's see if they can do it. They are about 62 yards away right now. And the clock is ticking down to nine minutes. Hardy coming on the blitz. They pick it up. Coleman pass behind him. Kelly Day's there on the defense, but the pass was behind him. The play was open, aren't you? Yeah, they really had two people out there with Pat had gotten inside the short corner. Ball was thrown a little bit behind. Impossible for him to make the catch. John, of course, on another three-step drop. Like Willie, Jeffrey Holder, Willie Green go out of the game. A difference, Archie, has been, I think, the fact that Tennessee has gotten yards on first down, and Ole Miss has been second and long a lot today. They really have. It's tough to get that incompletion on first down. It really puts you in the hole. Bradley noses up there. And this gets back, and Darnell getting a quick drop, and that one just slipped. Yeah, that one got away from John. Trying to hit the quick out to Reed Hines. Defensive linebackers and John Darnell playing a little cat and mouse on the blitz there. Gives him something to think about. Darnell really appears to be more of a touch passer, though. He's not got your extra strong cannon for an arm, but he puts the ball in the right place. And when you make him throw it all the way across the field, that's a hard throw for anybody. Well, it really is. And just throughout the year, he's really just gotten the job done. He had a really a poor first half against LSU two weeks ago, but came back and did a good job leading the team. Got Ole Miss in a position to win in the second half. Third down and 10. He's checking off at the line. Probably hard for him to hear. This crowd's unbelievable. Here comes the blitz. Darnell picks it up. He's got a man, and it's just thrown away. Green had one-on-one -on -one coverage if Darnell had time to get it to him. Well, you might give credit to the crowd. I think he checked off, and Willie Green couldn't hear it. Willie was on the up route. John thought he was going to break it to the sideline. Ole Miss has to punt it away. Big series. First time really today that the crowd's gotten involved in the game enough to really confuse the Ole Miss signals. 8.49 to go. Ole Miss will have to give it up. Tennessee down through this year at least. And this situation has really put the, the killing blow on. They've taken the football and driven it right down the field and kept it away from the other team. I said Ole Miss has some fake punts in their plan. Not here, though. They'll punt it away. Great punt by Childers. Woods is going to take a fair catch. This time it works to perfection. They've the three other times he's been back there, it's been kind of messed up. That's the only common one we've seen today. 45-yard punt by Childers. You know, we're talking about the crowd getting in the game. Very reminiscent of the USF&G Sugar Bowl a few years ago against Miami when Miami didn't take many of their tickets to bring people to New Orleans. Tennessee had them all. Yeah, I'll tell you, Mr. Testaverde had a long day trying to check off that crowd in the Superdome. Some scores around the uh, southeast today. It is Auburn on top of Georgia, 20 to 3. Alabama and Southern Miss are tied up 7-7 at the half. Florida leads Kentucky 24 to 7. And Penn State leads Notre Dame in the first, 7 to nothing. Tennessee. Hands off, nothing there. They faked the end around and gave it to Webb, and Webb was blasted by Daryl Smith. Clock runs, eight and a half minutes to go. They were in the unbalanced line that time and tried to reverse off of it. Here it comes on the replay. No fooling old Miss there, though. They're at home making the play, keeping Webb from gaining any more. I, what is he, 200 yards now? But I yeah, kept him it. from going over 200 yards. <laughs> Daryl Smith, fine senior nose guard, makes a fine play. Jackson, Mississippi product. Kelly with a second and long. Again, they hand it to Webb. He breaks a tackle. He's got a first down. Now he's got 200 yards. <laughs> Plus, Mitchell and counting. Right up the middle this time. Cross blocking on the backside with the draw. Good cut block there. Webb just doing his own, breaking the tackle, keeping his feet down into the secondary. 
They ought to call the offensive linemen the surgeons. They're just oh, cutting I'm people up. Yep. That's a nice block by Poles, well, too. Webb does some of it himself right there. Just runs right through Pete Harris. Ole Miss trying to hold Tennessee to a field goal. Amsler runs through one tackle. Fights out close to a first down. Jim Lentz had him dead to rights behind the line of scrimmage. And finally, Gary Avi knocks him down, but not before Amsler picks up close to another first down. Well, great effort on the part of these Tennessee backs. Once again, pretty poor block, poor tackling up front for Ole Miss. Alvin Harper is limping to the sideline now for Tennessee. There's Amsler. Amsler was a soccer player in high school. Said he didn't even want to play football, and then one time they got him out that he was going to kick an extra point, and they ran a fake, and he took off down the field and scored a touchdown, and he's been playing football ever since. Kelly, out pattern, complete. Anthony Morgan, short game, but a good enough for a first down at the 45-yard line. Again, aren't you? Those quick little outs, again, just soften the secondary. Well, they do. In college ball, as we say, when you're on that hash mark, though, it's such a long throw. Kelly, a little bit off target there. Of course, you've got with that long throw. I think, Ron, you, you throw it behind them more often because you sure don't want to get one picked off right there. But you're seeing more and more the Tennessee controlling the ball, the clock being ate up. Ole Miss is getting closer and closer to the line of scrimmage. Tennessee, do they want to take a chance and throw it down the field? It seems like an opportune time. You got a chance to get an interception there. Tennessee is running the clock. Ole Miss has got to get the ball back, and that's the big key. There's Amsler. It's a pretty good day. Five carries and 28 yards, but the big story today is Chuck Webb. Webb at 214 yards and 30 carries. Absolutely. Takes it to the sidelines. In case you're interested, the record for Tennessee, Johnny Jones, 248 yards against Vanderbilt in 1983. Webb is going to have every opportunity to break that record today. Six and a half minutes to go. Webb on the move again. Right up the middle. Cuts it to the outside of the 40. Out of bounds at the 30, 29 yard line. Like Don Price saved the touchdown. It's like a track meet. Chuck Webb doing everything it takes to get the ball in the end zone. He just hadn't got there yet. It seems like he just runs out of room. Here we'll sit on the replay. Kelly handing the ball off. Cutting back from a wall blocker. He's making two people miss right there. He gets it to the outside, turns the corner, and just does step out of bounds. They talked about Tennessee might have a. I think Ole Miss is going to take a timeout here, Bob. Yeah, they talked about Tennessee having a falling off at tailback after Reggie Cobb was suspended indefinitely. And the coaching staff said, no, we got some very capable tailbacks. And Chuck Webb has shown that today. Billy Brewer. Rod, if you're Brewer, what do you do? You blitz here, or how do you stop them? I tell you, I, they've been trying for the last three quarters. Very tough here. The Ole Miss has tried a lot. Of, they tried to play a lot of players today. They've mixed it up somewhat up front. Tennessee's kind of dictated their coverage some, somewhat in their fronts because they've split people out with their wide receivers. Basically, though, you know, football just comes down to blocking and tackling. Tennessee's doing the blocking. Ole Miss not doing much tackling. I think Ole Miss's defense, it's banged up anyway. They're getting worn out, too. Tennessee's offensive line. That's one thing about it, Ron. You played enough defensive line action to know that in the fourth period, after those big guys have been banging on you, the legs get a little heavy, don't they? They sure do. And it's just a matter of fact that they've been on the field for such a long amount of time. They've tried to stunt, create things, but so far they've made a few bad plays for Tennessee. Tennessee hadn't turned the ball over. They've kept their drives alive. The penalties have hurt Tennessee, but they haven't fumbled. They haven't thrown interceptions. They're doing the things it takes to win the ball game. You're right. Ole Miss has got to get, come, come up with a turnover here to stay in this ball game. 6:22 left. Tennessee leads 26-21. Holes just cranking it out on first down. They're getting five and six yards on every first down play. Mike Keats on the sidelines. Mike. Bob, all of a sudden, it's starting to come right into focus, something the Ole Miss coaches were talking about in the first half. Their defensive line getting worn down. Tennessee with a lot of possession time in the third quarter. It may be starting to show their biggest fear coming true. Tennessee just running it right at them, and Ole Miss trying to stop them, but not much success. Pulls the fullback. Chuck Webb going for the single-game rushing record. Webb breaks it outside again. This time, good play by Chris Mitchell. 
Chris Mitchell made a fine tackle. Chuck Webb has run through so many of those tackles today. Good hole up front once again. Boy, the offensive line is just tying up the Ole Miss defensive front, allowing Webb to make his breaks. Yard and a half to go. I think he's going to sleep good tonight. He's earned every bit of it. He, he's been a workhorse for Tennessee the last couple of weeks. The Waves made its first appearance in the Volunteer Stadium today. This is Webb's first 200 yard game. He needs a couple of more to set the record. He might get it on this run. Chuck Webb has a penalty flag down at the face 11 mask. yard line. Face mask, Chris Mitchell rolls Webb down. Well, Ole Miss stacked it up pretty good inside. Webb just broke it to the outside. Nice crease. Well, oh, he does such a great job when he gets to the secondary, too, making people miss. We have Webb at 252 yards, which is a new record for. Tennessee a single game rushing record breaking Johnny Jones's old mark of 248 in the 1983 Vanderbilt game. And Webb's done it with banged up ribs just thinking he was healthy. <laughs> I can't imagine. He's on the sideline getting a well deserved rest right there. Face mask penalty against the Rebels moves it down to the six. Touchdown here. Pretty much ices this thing. Clock under five minutes. Bowles and Amsley the running backs. Poles just catapults down to the two. Tennessee with two tight ends, one wide receiver in the game. They're just lining up toe to toe now and just coming off the ball. Yeah, that's just butt them in the mouth offense right there. Nothing fancy about it. Poles from Caledonia, New York, just barrels it up in there. He hasn't scored a touchdown yet this year. Poles might have a shot to do it right here. 419 to go. Thompson came in, they sent him right back out. I'll tell you what, that's a lot of fullback in that backfield right now with Amsler and Poles both in there. Poles jumps, dives, close. No signal. He's going to be stopped short. Third down. Jacobs and Cobb hanging on the best they can to keep him out of the end zone. Oh, nice job by Bowles trying to go over the top. He made a dive on the previous play, and there, were, there wasn't a pile there. It was a hole. <laughs> but he looked good doing it. They <laughs> ran the same thing again, but that time there was a pile, and he didn't make it in. Here's the wishbone. Tony Thompson is in, along with Poles and Amsler. Thompson at the top of the screen on the wishbone. They get the ball to Amsler, and he's going to dive into the end zone. Touchdown, Greg Amsler, and Tennessee has opened things up. Sixth rushing touchdown of the season. And Tennessee leads it now 32 21. A back breaking drive by the Tennessee Volunteers. That's what they've done all season long. Put it away in the fourth period. And now Greg Burke on to attempt the extra point. Burke has been perfect all season. Still is. Tennessee 33, Ole Miss 21. Again, Tennessee goes to that wishbone behind that big and effective offensive line. And Greg Amsler dies in for the touchdown. Tennessee leads 33 21, with now only 322 left to go in this game at Neyland Stadium. Tennessee fans celebrate. The Ole Miss fans are still hopeful, but it doesn't look good. 33-21. It would take two scores by the Rebels. Took them 12 seconds to score the first play of the second half. I wouldn't give up yet. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to kick it to Ashley though this time. There's a kick to the up man. That's Maurice Shaw. He gets out to the 32-yard line where he's bent back by Mark Fletcher, 36, and Lee Wood, 17. The Cluskey number six was also down there. There's the scoring drive, 11 plays. Amsler gets the touchdown. Took 519 off the clock, and that's another big stat. Ron assessed the Tennessee defense so far in the game. They've held Ole Miss to two touchdowns. The Tennessee defense is glad that the Tennessee offense is keeping the football. That's the best thing that's happened to them all day long. Darnell's got a lot of work to do. Green drops the ball. You know, the defense really 
has done a pretty good job on the last two series though Ole Miss had a couple of drives going they got him in a position where they where they had to punt. Here's your touchdown by Amsler up and over the top. You got to jump the jumper there. Nobody from Ole Miss is really getting off their feet so Amsler just carries them on into the end zone. Yeah Mitchell got close. The best thing that the Tennessee defense has done today is create two turnovers that led to scoring opportunities that the offense did convert for him. Handoff up the middle. Just a couple of yards. That's how I can get it done. As well, Ole Miss tries, tried to cross them up a little bit there, Bob. Everybody expecting pass, kind of a two minute type of offense. Try to hit something quick and bust it. It worked early in the first half, but Tennessee read it there. Darnell has misfired on his last five passes, and he's running out of time. Darnell looking down the field, throws, and it's going to be incomplete. Throw it out of bounds. Yeah, John, a little upset with himself. I think he really had. Plenty of time. No one was open. He looked downfield, tried to hit the swing people. The linebackers were out there on the backs, but he had so much time. Pat Coleman just brought it back. And John didn't make a good throw. Now Ole Miss is in big trouble. Fourth down. How about the fake punt here, Arch? It might might be a good time. They've got, a couple, they've got a couple of them. One to the up back. Another one on a pass. They're going into a huddle, and Tennessee's in a prevent, so. There's a possibility. I'm sure that Tennessee will just let them punt it away if they want to punt it here. Nobody back for Tennessee at all. Children's going to kick it away. They'll let it run as the clock ticks down at 235. Baldwin a key stat too. 71 yards in the first half, 16 yards in the second. That pretty much tells the story for the Rebels. Well, it's Ron said it. Tennessee did just such a great job of holding on to the football. Ole Miss with a couple opportunities, couldn't convert, had to punt it away. Very disappointed after one as they were down in the plus territory. And Tennessee just took charge, took the football, drove it, retained it. Webb's back into the game. We thought he might have for a rest, but he's back in with time on the clock to add on to that record. Well, he's got it. He's got a shot at 300 yards if he can break one here. He's already got the single game rushing mark for Tennessee. And he's going back to work. He's in the secondary. Cuts back. Webb down the sidelines and out of bounds. He's got a shot at 400 yards. Yeah. What a run by Chuck Webb. Just when you think he's ready to call it a day, he comes back out on the field, waves Tony Thompson off, gets the first hand off, and breaks it for another big game. Well, well the Ole Miss defense is trying, but Archie, they're out of gas. No, they're out of gas. They're completely worn down. These linemen just kind of just tying up the old Miss defensive linemen. They're tired, very hard for them to come off the blocks. Miss tackles downfield. 294 yards. Nobody's ever done it at Tennessee. Nobody's ever rushed for 300 yards. Tony Thompson is in there now. They go up the middle. Amsler is pushed back. He's got oh several yards there. Crowd is cheering for Chuck Webb to get back in there. <laughs> Crowd's going web, web, web. 33 21, Tennessee on top of the Rebels, under two minutes to go. Looks like Bill Higdon, the assistant coach, ran up to Coach Majors. I think he let him know that they're right at the 300 mark. You may see Webb come back in. There's Tony Thompson back at tailback. Kelly watching the clock tick down to 140. Thompson picks his way. To the 22. A little bit of a late hit there, no whistle. They get him up off the bench and the crowd's back into the game. Here's Chuck Webb. He's going for 300. That's unofficial, but we're close. 294. If he breaks one the rest of the way, we won't have to worry about a yard or two. He'll be well over 300 yards. But the Ole Miss defense now, they're all up on the line of scrimmage, He's knowing that Tennessee's not going to chance a throw, so they're going to be hitting the gaps. Under a minute. Webb darts outside to the 20, just picks up a couple, but that's a first down. That'll take him. Well, he needs three yards. Clock runs. Tennessee can run one more play. And Webb's going out. 
And listen to the crowd on the hand for Chuck Webb from Toledo, Ohio. Thirty three twenty one Tennessee on top. And now the volunteers will just sit on it. This should be the last play and Andy Kelly will touch it down and. That'll be it. Tennessee continues its march towards at least the Cotton Bowl maybe the Sugar Bowl and maybe a share of the Southeastern Conference Championship as the volunteers are going to beat the Ole Miss Rebels today in Knoxville in front of ninety three thousand plus. The crowd ticks it down Johnny Majors out to shake the hand of Billy Brewer Tennessee's win streak in November continues it's 19 as Tennessee wins 33 21. Marco Vanek, the former Tennessee defensive tackle, the first out to shake Coach Major's hand. Vanek has seen Tennessee win many games in November on this field, and today on the other side of the football, as Billy Brewer and Johnny Majors talk about their teams. Ole Miss now six and four. Tennessee is eight and one, and headed to big things in this 1989 season. Archie, Tennessee workmanlike in the second half, and I think the key thing was Tennessee bounce back. After the touchdown by Ansley on the kickoff return. Yeah, Ole Miss may have may have hit him too quick right there, but you can't say.